Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to everyone. My name is Ruchika Anand and I welcome you all to the seventh episode of our Naya Bharat e-series on behalf of Participation in School Education, SEG of Unnat Bharat Abhiyan, IIT Delhi, Ministry of Education. Before we start, for the participants who are joining us through YouTube, you may ask questions from the speakers by posting on the YouTube chat box along with your name. To begin our session, let me introduce you to Professor Nomesh B. Bolia, the person behind the Naya Bharati series. Dr. Nomesh Bolia is a professor at IIT Delhi in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. With a B.Tech from IIT Bombay and PhD in Operations Research from UNC Chapel Hill in the US, his research and innovation interests are in operations research and its applications to public systems, policy and governance, especially in areas such as school education. He is the National Coordinator of the Unnat Bharat Abhyan's Subject Expert Group on Participation in Schools. Professor Bolia is the recipient of several national international awards and grants such as Indo-US Science and Technology Forum's Public Health Fellowship and DAD Research Space. He has published several papers in international journals of repute, consulted many companies in the public-private sector in India, and mentored startups in the broad domain of operations research. His vision and commitment to the area of industrial engineering and operations research have been recognized by the government of India by nominating him as a member of the Board of Governors of the National Institute of Industrial Engineering, India's premier institute in this area. Professor Numesh is also the national coordinator of the ASEAN PhD Fellowship Program of the Government of India, which aims to harness the potential of India-ASEAN cooperation through education and research. I now request Professor Bolia to kindly introduce us to the Naya Bharat E3 and take us further towards the webinar. Okay. Namaste everyone and a very warm welcome to this seventh edition of the Naya Bharati series. It's a part of the Umnath Bharat Abhiyan that was started in 2014 to essentially connect the higher education institutions of the country to areas that need development. The E-series itself is a part of a subject expert group within the Umnath Bharat Abhiyan and we have done six editions so far. The first edition was essentially on early education in mother tongue where our key learning was that teaching in mother tongue at the early level is essential to understand almost everything from math to science to uh, stories. Uh, even in fact, if you wanted to learn another language, doing it through the mother tongue initially would be a great idea. That was our key learning of the first webinar. The second webinar was about peer learning, where we essentially saw how one can actually, from the rigor of math, to the creativity of life skills, one can figure out peer learning methods uh, to teach in schools. The third webinar was about Sanskrit in schools, where a key learning was that not only does it connect uh, us to our roots, it can also help in making education overall more insightful and deep. The fourth webinar was on science, where Professor Hari Sharma also and Dr. Chidambaram, our former principal scientific advisor, launched our science kit. And they also talked about how science needs to be connected to everyday experience. Uh, the fifth session was about Indian knowledge systems and the kind of impact that they can create in school education and beyond. The sixth education was a very the sixth session was a very special one on gifted child, where essentially we talked about how our system is geared to handle people with less abilities, but surprisingly not so for people with more abilities. And here we are on the seventh edition with a very, very special theme, which is uh, storytelling for school education. To begin with, I, I quote, and I hope it is attributed correctly by Einstein, which says, if you want your children to be smart, tell them stories. If you want them to be brilliant, tell them more stories. It is observed that children and even adults have an innate love for stories. It creates a magic and a sense of wonder for us. They teach us about life, about our own selves, about others. Not only does it develop literacy, it also conveys the values, beliefs, attitudes, and social norms, which shape how we perceive reality. Stories, whether told through picture books or dance images, math equations, songs, oral retellings, even movies, are one of the most fundamental ways in which we communicate. They link the world of classroom and home. Even subjects like math and science, as we will see in the webinar today, can be explained better through the art of storytelling. 
In the new education policy, storytelling has been mentioned as one of the important pedagogies to be adopted in various subjects. It says, and I quote, in all stages, experiential learning will be adopted, including hands-on learning, arts integrated and sports integrated education, storytelling based pedagogy, among others, as standard pedagogy, and please note the use of the terminology, standard pedagogy within each subject and with explorations of relations among different subjects. The teaching of all the languages will be enhanced through innovative and experiential methods, including through gamification and apps by weaving in the cultural aspects of the languages such as films, theater and storytelling. Very clearly, our national education policy has involved storytelling in learning languages and all kinds of other subjects. Now, without taking too much time, let me begin. Uh, and it's my honor to introduce the uh, chief guest for today, the acclaimed author and the chairperson of Infosys Foundation, uh, Sushri Sudha Murthy. Sudha Murthy ji completed her uh, engineering from the BVB College of Engineering, obtained first rank across all branches and received a gold medal from the Institute of Engineers. She did her ME from the Indian Institute of Science with distinction and started her career as an engineer with Telco. Today, she is the chairperson of Infosys Foundation as it handled 16 national disasters in the last 24 years. She studied in a Kannada medium school till the 10th standard and fell in love with the language. Her strong ties to the language and its people led her to establish more than 60,000 libraries in Karnataka. She also believes strongly in creating awareness for social causes and has passionately traveled the world for this purpose. An absolutely prolific writer in English and Kannada, her books have been translated into all major Indian languages and have sold more than 30 lakh copies around the country. She's a columnist for English and Kannada dailies with 30 books and more than 200 titles to her credit, many of them my own favorite, including novels, nonfiction, children's books, travelogues, technical books, and memoirs. She has received nine honorary doctorates. Some of her other awards include the R.K. Narayan Award for Literature, the Padma Shri in 2006, 2006, the Atti Mabbe Award from the Government of Karnataka for Excellence in Kannada Literature in 2011, the Lifetime Achievement by Crossbook, Crossword Book Awards in 2018, and more recently, the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award for Excellence in 2020. She lives by the belief that generosity of a few is hope for millions. Sudhaji, it's an honor to have you grace this occasion. Thank you so much for giving your time. And over to you, please. Namaste, Professor. It is always a joy for me to talk to teachers because I come from a teaching family. My father was a professor and a doctor in a medical college. My grandfather was a school teacher. My mother was a school teacher. My brother is a professor at Caltech and my sister is a professor at Bangalore Medical College. So this background of teaching uh, and I myself taught in Bangalore University, in Christ University. So this background of teaching always have helped me to understand students. And one thing I enjoyed and students enjoy storytelling. For example, many of my students are extremely successful in my 25 years of teaching. And I meet them and I ask them, Beta, I taught you Java, C++, decision making, database management many computer oriented subjects, but which one do you remember and which was useful to you in real life? Most of them say, ma'am, you did teach and we enjoyed. But you know, one hour class, normally I used to teach 45 minutes because I always believed you can hold anybody's concentration for 45 minutes, not more than that. So first 45 minutes, I will teach subject. Remaining 15 minutes, I will always tell a story which is more relevant to that subject. I can always make some stories and tell you. They said, ma'am, we remember your stories even after leaving college 20 years back. And they have taught us so much in real life. That time I realized that if you go on telling, look, you should do these following things, you know, people get bored. It becomes like a moral lesson class. But with your experience and you convert what you want to tell, you tell them in the form of a story, then children will remember forever. Storytelling is a nice art Probably in my case, I can tell you, I learned it through my childhood because, you know, uh, when I was born and brought up in a village, there was no electricity. The only source of entertainment for me was only books. 
and when i used to read books my imagination did not have a limit i can imagine anything like you know krishna when you think then you know how is he shantakaram bhujagashayanam padmanabham suresham that means he's tall he's dark he's handsome and uh, he had a nice smile all these things so it, it the limit was my own imagination whereas when my children were brought up later part of my life and they saw uh, on dd there are many ramayana mahabharata the first mahabharata they saw for them when i say describe krishna they will describe nitish bharatwaj because their imagination was limited because they could see it and they said krishna means the actor so in a village where there was not much entertainment reading a story repeating a story telling a story became my hobby and that i developed over a period of time and in call in my school when the teachers were only when there was a vacant period i was the class monitor they said okay keep the class intact uh, the children should not make any noise and they will go that time i will always tell a story so i developed this art of storytelling and in real life i i felt it it has a lot more meaning it it has taught me a lot and my students have learned a lot through that that helped me to write stories for children where what i want to tell i wanted to tell that always in the form of a story like you know i there was a real life example i will give two example one is a student of mine you know a student of mine let me call him vishnu uh, i met him after 15 years you know he was a very bright student in my college um so he got a job in uh, america and he was 3 uh, months he was not employed uh, waiting for his visa so he should come and teach and he was an excellent teacher so i told vishnu why can't to you do your phd and become a good teacher because you are very good in because it's not uh, everybody can express well he was expressing very well he was a good teacher he said no ma'am i can't i want to make lot of money and you know i am going abroad and he told me ma'am you can afford to talk all these things see whereas i am an ambitious person i said that ambition is different beta but you have the knack of teaching and you know you know knack of communication and he left and i didn't meet him after 15 years i met him and you know he came to my office he sat and i asked him how are you vishnu he said i'm fine then uh, what well, you know i asked him where are you he said i have an office in singapore i have i have a, a house in defense colony in delhi a house in indranagar i said no no wait i vishnu i am not an income tax officer to ask all those things where you have house how are you doing he said i am doing very well financially etc but still i could make out as, a, as an elderly person as a as a teacher that he was not happy i asked him tell me vishnu why you are not happy you look like that he said yes ma'am i am not happy i said what happened he said you know um uh i am not able to express you exactly but something is wrong somewhere i said he said i said what is that he said i can't express anything to anything anywhere i said why you are such a good expressive person what happened uh, i said you can talk to your friends he said i don't have much friends i said why he said um ma'am i make friends only when they are useful for example if uh, i do a lot of networking because i believe in networking and uh, network people do not listen to your difficulties i said uh, vishnu then your relatives your wife your daughter he showed me his daughter's photograph etc he told me no uh, i am not able to express my anything to my wife because my wife is also very busy she has her own business of carpet business or some business and my daughter is very smart i said that's happy, happy thing is it no you know my daughter knows when to talk to me to get what and she talks to her mother when she wants it's only child i said vishnu life is not always 2 plus 2 not always earning money not always having friends so that they will become steps in the ladder of success or ha- having a wife or husband where you each of us will have an advantage life is much more than that you should have good business i don't deny that you should have good friends good acquaintances and with wife and husband you should share and you to bring up your child in such a way that the child should 
not take you for an advantage or anything. The child should take you as the most loving parent and tell you. He said, ma'am, I have come to you. Tell me what to do. I said, first of all, if you can convert every transaction into business, if you convert every transaction into business, what will I gain in this friendship? What will I gain in marriage? What will I gain? You know, if the child is asking me, spend some time. Instead of that, I will buy an electronic toy and make her busy and I will spend my time on my work doing that. These are all transactional relationship. If you keep, then you will be uneasy like this. If you want a meaningful life and healthy life, then you should not have transaction in relationships. You can have transaction only in business. And please try that one. It Now it may be a little hard, but try. There's nothing like, you know, I can't do. Please try. And it, it will be a great life if you can get unconditional love in your relationship. You feel nice in life. Then he told me, ma'am, I will definitely try to do that. And use my story to tell everywhere, you know, wherever you go, telling that life is not a transaction all the time. In business, you can do transaction, but not in human relation. And if you do that, look at my life, how it has happened. Please tell, because you meet a lot more people, you get a platform. And take my own story. It's a true story, I'm telling you. So this story, I do repeat to my students, you know, I have different types of students. For example, I used to teach uh, postgraduate courses. When I used to teach postgraduate courses, then I will use this telling that, look, you people after this course, MBA and MCA, you will get good jobs. Money is important. You will earn money. But you should understand in life relationships are important. And also I used to encourage path less traveled for my students, particularly for the girls. I used to tell girls, Life is not like, you know, uh, six, you know, you have to work, your husband will work, you make a lot of money, then buy a site, 60, 40, make three-story building, then, you know, go for a holiday Singapore and Malaysia or um, Europe tour, etc. Life is beyond that. Life is beyond that. Life is to help others, to live as simple as possible, and to share with others and lead a peaceful life. That has much more meaning and such people are less and that is the path of less traveled and such path you should travel so that you get a bet you get a real happiness or the real satisfaction inside in your mind and this is the way i always told in my teaching career what is important in in, in life apart from the subject many a times other teachers used to get upset with me because in my class i used to get maximum students because I loved my students. When they make mistake, I will tell them better. This is not the way. I have seen so much in life. I was not like, you know, I get my salary, let me teach what I can teach and I'll get out of that. I never did that because I always respected teaching is one of the greatest profession. And I used to tell them in Kathopanishad, they say, who are the most important people in your life? You know, the first one is your mother, that is Matrudeva Bhava. Second one is your father. Is Pitru Devo Bhava, then it is Acharya Devo Bhava, that means the person who taught you. And a teacher has a great responsibility compared to other people because what parents cannot teach, teachers can teach. What parents cannot teach, teachers can teach. I will give one more example. I had a student, it's all real life stories. I changed the name. And uh, they have given me permission also, those characters. You know, uh, Hassan, his name was Hassan uh, Salim, And he was a bright student of mine. But never in time to the class. Never in time. I used to call him. I said, Hassan, you are so bright. Why, why, are so, uh, why are you so irregular to the class? And, you know, you get a first class, but if you really put your hard work, you get a rank. And more than that, you enjoy subject. You know, when there is an important seminar, he won't come. Then I ask him, what happened? My grandmother died. Some other time, grandfather died. And once I told my memory is good. In my three years course, you have, your grandmother have died three times. 
Once their father dies, father said, once their mother said, I can take. Third, I do not know who is he. Who is she? Why lie to me? I told my hair has not gone gray without a reason. I have seen enough in life. Then grandparents died all the time. And when the, when the examination uh, day, uh, comes, then he will come shortage of the attendance. And then you know, I said, no, I will not give you. Because I knew he won't come to class. Then his parents will come. I want to tell you a very funny thing. When children do any mistake, you know, a particular in school and college like this, I used to call parents. When you call parents, father will blame mother, mother, mother will blame father. Both of them will fight more than the child. Father will say, look, ma'am, I'm so busy. I'm traveling to earn money. And my wife should have done. Wife says, this boy goes out and saying that I'm going to college. He doesn't go. He's not scared of mother. You know, all children are not scared of mother. They're scared of father. He doesn't listen to me. Father's not only earning money. He should have told all these things. At that, I said, no, you go home now. So I used to tell, Hassan, look at this. You are so good. Unnecessary, you bring your parents. Then he will say, ma'am, somehow you give. And you know, I used to feel bad and I will give him attendance. Then he will appear for the exam. You will pass. You will get a first class for that matter. Many years passed and I didn't see a Hassan for a long time. And uh, one day, I, uh, he came to see me after maybe 10 years or something. I said, what are you doing? He said, uh, I'm, I have an agency, a book agency or something, a job, you know, a small job, actually. I said, you are so bright. You are so good in, good in uh, getting marks. Uh, what happened to you? People in your class who have not, who have never did that well academically, they have done very well in life. Why? He said, ma'am, I want to tell you my story. I passed because I knew how to get good marks because I will, you know, I will buy heart equation, etc. In those days, you know, the methodology was also different, not multiple question. Um, I passed, but I never gathered lab, gathered knowledge. Then I applied for a job. I got a job because of my marks. My body was not used to getting up at 6 and going to office at 8. I will get up at 7 or 8 and go to 10. So first one or two jobs, I, you know, they realized that I don't have knowledge. They fired me. After two jobs, I, I became a little diffident. So, and that two jobs I lost like this. When I lost four jobs in three years, then subsequently it was so hard to get me a job. So, you know, I have to settle for the smaller job and it, it's hard for me. I only wish I would have listened to you. I said, nay, I want to tell you why you have to listen. When you are in school or college, you form good habits. That means get up in the morning, come to college, work hard, make good friends have good habits and go back and enjoy the subject for the sake of learning than marks. I always told them, enjoy the subject and subject will teach you or subject will take you up. If you don't have knowledge and if you have only marks, then you may get job, but people will look down upon you when you don't have knowledge. Please remember in any job, first time they, you will get a job because of your marks. Subsequently, it is your your knowledge about the job or knowledge about the work, that brings you respect. For that, you have to work hard. You have, you have to learn extra. It is not all, what I learned in BE or MBA. That is the final. It, we should go on increasing it. And you have to work in a team. Like it is, it is, like a, it is not tennis. It is a, a, a cricket. In cricket, if one fellow doesn't do well, still the, the, the cricket, uh, the team will not win. All of them have to put maximum effort. So is, you know, working in an office, you are subordinate, your bosses, your colleagues, all together you should play in a team. And Hassan sitting at home, I mean, not attending the office, not attending the class, going late, not having the knowledge, who will like to keep him? Because in outside world, there is a heavy, thick competition, fierce competition. So I told uh, Hassan, and then he also told me, ma'am, please tell what is used to tell me in college. And now oh, I said, oh, madam talks, you know, like any other, you know, elderly person talks. I never understood the depth of what a teacher talks with experience. Experience is the best teacher, I told him, beta. Experience is the best teacher, but very expensive teacher. That's the reason you should listen to elders, and particularly teachers. And teachers also have a responsibility. I always believe teachers have responsibility. It is not that we are paid. 
you will just teach and go my bright students used to tell me ma'am we got we have understood this subject why are you repeating i said beta i have paid here for the last person in this class who should understand if you have not understood then my salary is a waste children and i treated them like my own children and with lot of patience lot of patience you know and with with affection i always taught i always taught them with, with as if they were my children and until they understand i never to leave and tell them practical life it is not theoretical life practical life i always told them life if you want to go out and compete it is not easy in college you have examination you know what kind no normally a smart person uh, can understand what kind of questions can come because you have six years question paper you keep you more or less you know or sometimes you know in college you have syllabus you have teachers you have you have uh, 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 peers with whom you can discuss in 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 real life none of them will be there you have examination every day you have examination every day there is no syllabus there is nobody to guide so it is like so if you want to go and succeed in life you should have lot of things with you thirst for knowledge learning more adjusting with people working hard discipline and more important is you know you should know your ethical work somebody is my boss is not there i am not working it is not it is not correct when the cat is out all the mice can dogs that is not right whether the cat is there or not a mouse should do its own work so i always said ethical you should be ethical in your work you should work because you receive salary for that you are responsible and this kind of all qualities make you a better person of course later part of my life i went on telling them along with that you should have compassion because whatever you earn i used to tell them small percentage of that money you should always keep it for helping others because pa- compassion is part of life please do not forget it don't tell when i become old that time i'll become like sudha murthy and i'll become a philanthropist don't say that compassion is part of your life and you should go on learning that from the beginning you know whatever capacity you have it may be small or it may be big or large but you must learn then only you are complete human being i used to always give an example life is like a thali you go to a restaurant and order a thali what you get in a thali rice chapati or puri one or two sabji rasam and sambar pickle and your dahi or yogurt then you get uh, a salad then you get dessert just because i like rice and i go on eating rice then it, you know all the vitamins will not come i like chapati only eating chapati all the time is not complete i like salad and i only eat salad your weight may be reduced but you will not you you will not get all the vitamins so to have a normal balanced meal you should eat some rice some chapati or puri sabji you have to eat salad you have to eat dal you have to eat and then for your tongue sake you have to eat sambar or rasam at the end you have to have a dessert that is complete balanced meal and the same is life in life you should you, like a dessert is compassion you should be smart you should be hard working you should be adjustable you should have the thirst of learning okay then you should be polite you should be polite you should use kind words and you should never show off your wealth all these things make probably you a, a good person and that is the way i always wished my student to lead a good life than a prosperous life i always said you no know, i rather you people lead a good matured life than prosperous one sided life and my students are ever grateful to me that is one thing i want to tell wherever i go any part of the world my students will come to know they say ma'am please come to our house if you can't come then we'll have a get together in, in in one's house and you should visit and they introduce their children like this is the teacher who taught us apart from subject many other things in life which no syllabus can teach she taught us so much so many other things which probably helped us so much in life that time i feel so much a kind of happiness which i cannot tell with money it comes i feel i helped one generation of students when i taught in college 
to be a good human being. Most of them have turned out to be. So teachers, I, I request you that in you know when you teach, please understand you have a great responsibility. Just don't, and you know, I never showed any any preference somebody who is bright. I said, fine, if somebody is bright, fine. But keep an eye on people who are not bright. You know, they look up at you, they want your help. Please remember that. So in, in life, I have always done this simple way, whatever I felt legally, ethically right. For example, you know, I joined engineering college in the year 1968, where there were no girls in the entire university in my class. It was a very difficult time. It was a very difficult time. But it was, it was a time I learned a lot. When I was all alone, I became autonomous. I said, I should not depend on anybody. If I have difficulties, I must learn to solve. I should be, I never missed a single class because I knew if I miss class, I will, nobody will help me. It helped me a lot to realize what it is a path less traveled. When I go back to my college and see students, now in instrumentation and all, there are about 50-60% of them are girls. I tell them, if boys are a minority, please look after them well. Because when I was in minority, what a life I had, I know. So I feel as a teacher, you should be compassionate. You should be knowledgeable. For example, sometimes students will ask you very good questions. And you may not know answers. When I do not know answers, what I used to tell, look, I am not, I am not able to answer you. I will get back to you tomorrow. Today, because of internet, students prepare and come. It is not easy to teach with your old notes. You have to be always updated. You have to be one shade better than your students. Then only they will respect. Your knowledge level should be high. Then only they will come to class. Otherwise, there's always a proxy will be there. There are many ways, you know, how children uh, can miss class, I know. Or they come and they look at the watch. Or they sleep, they snore, or they talk. All those things they do. That means your class is not interested. That you should understand. And for that, you have to prepare. A three-credit course, you have to predict, you have to teach, or you have to learn nine credit or nine hours you have to spend. The teaching is not like what you learn and you have to repeat. Today's scenario is highly competitive. You must prepare and go to class. And if you do not know, don't lie. Tell I do not know. That is the best way and the honest way. And then you get a solution and tell them next day. It is not that I do not know and I won't come and tell you next day. That is not correct. Next day you should come and tell the solution. Sometimes, you know, I used to uh, tell, uh, uh, this is the last class, in the last class, I used to tell them a story which I want to tell before I close my talk. In the last day of the class or the college, when students were graduating, I used to tell always this story for every batch. The, uh, you know, there was a king of Kashi and king of Kosala in olden days. There are not many highways and the roads were small. One day, King of Kashi was traveling and other direction, King of Kosala was coming. And it was a small road. So one has to give way to the other person to cross. Two chariots cannot cross and you know, go side by, you know, side by. It was hard. So one has to give a way for other chariot. So both kings kept quiet. They did not talk. They allowed their charioteers or their rathika that uh, um, one who driver uh, to talk the king of kashi is the driver said now the king of kosala said driver said my king has 100 elephants or 1000 elephants these many sipahis these many things etc we have the king of kashi's chariot told the same thing you know we have all those things that means they are equal in power then the king of uh, the chariot of kosala told i have my king has so much of land and so much of wealth in, in, in terms of coins or gold or something. The king of Kashi's charity replied, we even hear the same. Then the, 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 whatever they said, the, it was going to be more or less equal and both were quiet. Uh, the both kings were observing. Then the charity of the king of Kosala said, my king is such a great person. If somebody makes a mistake, he punishes. Somebody is good, he rewards. And he he remembers if somebody is bad and 
and and he takes the revenge on them so that nobody should do that act again the charioteer of the king of kashi said my king if somebody makes a mistake calls them and tells him to learn and never repeat that mistake he pardons if somebody is crossing i mean somebody is against him he calls him or he goes towards him and asks him in what way they can settle it and never takes a revenge my king always is compassionate to everybody because compassion is a true human he believes in a true human being quality when uh, the king of king of kosala heard that he was touched he got down from his chariot and he went and met king of kashi and said you are a greater human being than me please you go first and i will learn from you you know i will treat my subjects the way you treat yours so i used to tell my students being pardoning people telling them when they are wrong it's wrong calling a spade as a spade and whenever whenever we make any mistake without any shame saying sorry i did not know please excuse me please pardon me and then in case any new ideas are coming in any direction which our rugveda has already said anam bhadrani that means let all noble thoughts come from all direction i will accept when you have this kind of an attitude then you can win the world the world is a great place for you to play shubhaste panthano may all my children that's why i used to tell my students you are going on a new journey and i wish you all the best and go and kiss the world enjoy the world face the world help others live happily allow everyone to live happy thank you very much for patient hearing dhanyawad namaskar okay thank you so much uh, sudha ji that was a wonderful uh, session with insights coming from your experiences uh, all of them distilled through the real life stories that you narrated as wonderfully as you do in your books uh, of which as i said i myself am a big fan of you know we first bought those books thinking it they'll be good for our son but then eventually they were unputdownable for me as well uh, thank you so kind of you thank so uh, uh, quite a few questions sudha ji but i know you have time limitation so i'll distill out the best ones uh, you know according to what i feel are the best ones Uh, the mm-hmm. first one is uh, so i'll combine two questions uh, you're essentially saying how can storytelling be integrated with different subjects for example uh, you know how can it be taken up with the topic of grammar for example that's one of the uh, so basically how can storytelling be integrated with uh, teaching subjects so maybe from your experience experience of 45 15 if you could narrate uh, that would be very useful for you fine fine for example i will tell you uh, i used to teach decision making in management okay so uh, one hour subject 45 minutes i will draw a diagram when diagram all those diagrams you know what wh- the decision if the decision is yes it's like a flow chart if it is no other flow chart and when you make a decision you have to look at all the all, all technical things i will teach and after that because i have to i have to go by the syllabus because every teacher has a syllabus we can't go on teaching from the air we have syllabus and your examination i can't forget that after 45 minutes my class will be over then i used to tell them a story i told this story actually this story a simple story i said there was a young girl and uh, she used to go to a old teacher in a olden days 2000 years back okay so you go back 2000 years back there is a young younger and her father was a rich man and she used to pass a jungle father used to send her uh, a chariot or something like that she was a rich man's daughter she used to go to the other side of the uh, jungle and learn from the teacher and come back and when her marriage was fixed and the teacher said uh, beta you live happily i am like your father i wish you all the best and she said no sir i want to give you gurudakshana the teacher said no no i don't require she insisted she was a very head strong girl she said no i have to give she said your father has already paid she said no he said okay if that is the case then you should come to my house the day you get married with all your jewelry after marriage you should walk to my house okay he knew that she can't do that once you are married there will be people around you there are many people etc around you how she will come 
And she said, okay. So she came back and she got married. She had all the jewelry, the rich man's daughter. It was her marriage was over in the year, almost in the evening. Okay, in UP and all, you always, you are uh, in North India, you, your marriage is uh, solemnized only in the night, actually. But she said, after marriage, she told her husband, my teacher told me you should come immediately after my marriage and now I have to go and see him. Husband was very upset. He said, what kind of teacher he is? He said, okay. If you Then she said, I have given him a promise. A word of honor should be always respected. That's what my teacher has taught. He said, okay, is it? You go. And she went. Okay. And uh, one thief saw her on the way. One thief saw her on the way. And he, he said, okay, give me all your uh, jewelry. She said, a word of honor. Uh, no, I told my teacher I'll go with the jewelry. So I'm going. And if my teacher takes, I can't help it. If he doesn't take, knowing him, he won't like take it. When I come back, I'll give it to you. He said, a thief says, how can I believe you? He said, a word of honor. I always believed in a word of honor, which my teacher has taught. She went and the thief felt very funny about the whole story. He followed her behind her without knowing her. She went to the teacher's house. I mean, of course, my answers will take a little more time. But I want to tell the proper stories. She knocked the door. The teacher opened and he was scared. He said, Beta, why have you done this one? What people will think of me? I just, in a rage of anger, I told you. Go back. She came back and the thief came again uh, to her. And she said, take your jewelry. I will give mine. He said, no, no. Thank you very much. Word of honor. I respect. She came back. Husband said, look at her. And, uh, uh, what happened? She narrated everything. She said, come inside. That's the end of the story. I said, now, there are three questions I'll say. This, in this, there is a there is a, a husband, there is a thief. Okay, there is a husband, there is a thief, there is a teacher. And uh, of all the three people, make a decision who is the greatest. Uh, just now I taught you a theory of decision making. Now, given all those uh, attributes, you make Oh, who is the great? The moment I tell this one, there will be three, four groups. Somebody said, teacher is great. See how he has given the best education. A girl, I mean, she had made, he has made a nirbhara. The one. He came back and word of honor he has taught. He's great. Some people told, uh, thief is great because thief's job is to steal. He nothing to do with the teaching and non-teaching, okay? His job is to steal. And he gave word of honor and he respected. So he's greatest. Some people said, husband is great. Husband is great. In 2000 years back, he didn't suspect whatever his wife said. They come inside. So he's great. So what is the correct answer, ma'am? I used to smile and said, why not the girl is great? Think of that. In the night, orange, she used to go with her pal palanquin because or on the horse or somewhere because it was a dense forest. In the night, she's going alone without anybody. And she knew that she will tell her husband, husband may take or may not take back 2000 years back. Okay. She may be attacked with the animal. And with all those things, she has gone. What the society will tell. Is she not great? Then who is great? My students will ask. I said, nobody is great or nobody is less. The way you look at it. When you make a decision and you become successful, then everyone says, look, that decision was great. When you make a decision and it fails, then they say, you had a bad decision. When you make a decision, you should always understand Given set of circumstances, given set of circumstances, legally, ethically, morally, financially, socially, what is correct, that is the correct decision. That is the correct decision. So, in this story is the way you look at it. If you are a girl, the girl, I feel the girl was great. If you are a teacher, teacher is great. If you are a thief, if he's great, if you are a male chauvinistic man, you know, then the man is great. So the real solution is not who is great, the way you look at it. Like some people may do exceedingly well in their job, but domestically they may not do well. So he should not consider he's a failure. Some people do financially very well, but something else they may not do well. But if you do everybody, some people may do everything is above average. They may think they have done well. So it is the way what you give prominence that makes your decision. That is the one way of telling how I used to convert a story to the tough subject, whatever I used to tell. Yeah, no, that's a that's a brilliant uh, idea, Sudaji. I think uh, you know some of these learnings I can take back to my own classroom. 
uh, which brings me really to the uh, to the next question uh, have you so you know when we talk about empowering teachers right, there are all kinds of things being talked about such as creating an app creating digital content right uh, taking other examples of how teaching can be made effective right C creating those tools have you ever thought of or do you think it is worthwhile to create uh, this set of resources that help teachers become good storytellers uh, you know and integrate them in their teaching do you think the scope for creating such resources exist uh, i think this it has come not, from a teacher with this question actually it, it may not exist according to me see in my case i was very fortunate because i i, I read a lot of indian stories i made a research on stories only for example western stories are more logical european stories are more logical chinese stories uh, chinese and indian stories are the best stories middle east eastern stories are more on morals you know there are, uh, the wife runs away with somebody and do something some magic will be there uh, so every country has their cultural stories and india has a great cultural story because we have katha karis sarit sagara okay ocean of stories and we have mahabharata upakatha we have ramayana upakatha we have bhagavata upakatha so india is one country and we have maximum stories and in ancient if you ancient texts you read you get lots of stories and i used to always read and take part of it and modify but as far as i know there are no app or anything like this at least i do not know because of my reading habits it helped me to create a story and i read a lot i must have read more than 10000 stories actually to be honest with you and that is the reason i wrote five mythology books uh, unusual stories not new normal at all unusual stories in mahabharata unusual stories of krishna unusual stories of uh, rama everybody's unusual stories i have written this is only because i have a whole ocean of stories but uh, in real life i do not know yeah no so the unusual tales is a very popular one actually i myself have all all the five uh, titles that you talked about thank um, you uh, so one student has uh, asked a question uh, shibi jesua so the question is ma'am how to overcome stress during college days well uh, <laughs> I, you know uh, some some my son says you know Oh, Amma, when you were young, there was uh, less stress. It was easy college days. Today, it is not true. Uh, I said, no. It is 1 by 2 is equal to 2 by 4 is equal to 3 by 6 is equal to 4 by 8. 4 by 8 is not greater than 1 by 2. Okay? Everybody had stress in different way in their college days. But, you know, you should understand by, by having stress, you don't achieve anything. Actually, you know, when I was in college, I used to think if you get a first rank, it is so important. But you know, with my experience, I want to tell you, it is good to get good rank. It is good to get more, good marks. But more important is to have a, 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 a innovative mind, stable mind, and compassion mind, and to know how to reduce. Not instead of reducing stress, to make your mind not to have stress is more important than reducing stress. Okay, always make your mind. No, I will do my level best. You can always say, if there's a heavy competition, fine. If I'm intelligent, there is always someone else is better than me. If I'm beautiful, there is Aishwarya Rai is there. If I'm rich, Bill Gates is sitting above my head. There are always people who are better than you. There are always people below you. And everybody has their own potential. I can't I can't become Bill Gates, you know, in, in intelligence or somebody. Or Einstein, I am a small person. I have my own limitation. When you know your limitation, then you don't get stressed. And lead a, 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 a disciplined life, which can reduce a lot of stress. Like as a student, I will tell you, as a student, that day I used to prepare and go to class. And my I will come back and study the same subject at that day and I don't be. When I used to do chain survey, all those things, you know, civil survey, at that time civil was for two years, you know. So I used to go for survey. I will do the drawing sheet on that day only. So I never say accumulate studies up to the examination. Same day, same study. So examination time, I say, look, I have done my studies. And I will do my level best. More than that, I can't do. So if you instead of reducing stress, do, do not create stress in your mind. That's what I can tell you. 
Yeah, no, great. I think so. This is what we often tell our students, and many people, you know, this is common knowledge. What you said, but coming from you, I'm sure it'll have a greater impact. <laughs> there are quite a few students who are who are listening to this webinar. Uh, one, I know you you are in a hurry, Sudhaji. But one last question from my side. Then I do ask. Uh, in case you have one other question, sir, I'll answer. If okay, you, sure. Unless, so unless the sessions ask. are delayed, the sessions are delayed. If you are worried. No, 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 no. So we have kept time for that in the panel. So we'll convert that here. So no issues, no issues right. about that. Okay, okay. Can I ask um, the more so this, no problem. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, so this question, Sudhachi, is I'm sure many other student uh, teachers will also, uh, you know, find this question relevant. I handle it in my own way, right, uh, as a teacher. But I wanted to know your way. You talked about how your uh, idea is to not just teach subjects, but also. you know bring about some change in students lives right i mean that is the responsibility of teachers doesn't end only at a specific subject but often what happens is when a teacher tries to do that they will be seen as uh, you know boring maybe right people who are just saying things for the heck of it you know ye to bolta hi rehta hai you know this person just keeps on talking the same thing over and over again so the question is have you faced similar things and how have you tried to address that in in your experience of course a lot what my students and i was quite open also with students they said ma'am you know some people student uh, told me ma'am you can afford to talk all these things because your stomach is full your husband is a rich man so you talk all these things okay uh, though when you were not also rich still i talk, i was a teacher okay ma'am you can afford to talk all these things because your stomach is full Whereas we have to start our family, our parents have worked hard. We have to do support the family, and you, the way you talk, money is not important. I said, "No, but I never said money is not important. It is not the only factor." So they used to tell Mata, Mata Ji's course, okay? They would tell Mata Ji's course, you are simply. But the same students would come back, like wish to used to tell me, Mata Ji, now your course, this course is will start, okay? I said, "Okay, if you all, you know, I never used to get upset. I said, look, wish to." How much you weigh? That much salt I have consumed. You can afford to talk to me, Mata Ji, okay? And you don't want to listen, go out. So I said, students who are not interested in my Hito Padesha, you can go out. I will still give you attendance. People who would like to listen to me, stay back. And people who have walked out have come back to me after ten years, ten years, fifteen years. They said, ma'am. We never realized what it is because हमें मस्ती था हमें लगता था माता जी बोलते हैं okay it is not your stomach was full you were so mature which we never understood and that we understood after ten years and they always say I wish I had a teacher like her so many students always write you know you are the person who has changed our life I said no beta I you know when you person go to a river what container you take that much water you take similarly i am a cont you know you brought a big container you took more i tell the same thing to everybody someone takes a small glass somebody takes a big glass somebody takes a big you know uh, a pot it is you who i have taken i teach everybody the same people do that but i won't take personally because i say yeah, they are young josh hota hai na 25 years 20 years 18 years so they are even student you see 18 years student they will not even listen Okay, but I said, oh, Josh, what are they? Unka, unka, unko bhi ek bar. I said, once upon a time, I was also young. I told just to tell them. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. But still, so, I will so do my duty. Of... I will do my duty. Yeah. No, sure. So, so yeah, exactly. So that's what I was about to say. Is the takeaway for me then is that you know we just continue doing what we are, right, and not get upset, and hopefully yeah. people will pick it up at the right point. Yeah. If um, you so five of them question... change, uh, professor, five of them will change. I think it's worthwhile. Yeah, our life is worthwhile. Not hundred. Five of them become good student and come back to the alma mater and meet you. Be happy. Yeah. No. No. Absolutely. And I'm lucky to have many more than that, uh, Sudha ji. Actually, <laughs> because they are very good friends. You know, apart from being students. Yeah. But no, yeah. this is very helpful. Whatever you said. Uh, we do have some parents as well, Sudha ji, attending this uh, session. Uh, and uh, one, the next question is from a parent. Uh, so I'm Kush from Dubai. how should we inculcate the art and learning through storytelling in our teen aged children how to inculcate yes, the art parents. of learning parents yeah because first number one i teenage. repeatedly repeatedly i will tell teenage nowadays we have one or two children teenage is a problem 
you know, in olden days, there will be four, ten, four, five children. So there are no teenage. In our time, we never had a teenage. Okay, we had only an adult. <laughs> now you have one or two children, and parents both are working. So, so it's a double income family. So children, teenage becomes a problem because they th throw tantrums, peer pressure, a lot of electronic gadgets. They won't listen to you. If you want your children should read, you should read first. You should read. It is not that, you know, better you read and I will do computer. No. Better you read, I will go for a party. No. You sit with your children, you read, I will read. Okay. And then always bring book uh, when they are young. Always buy them books which is convenient for their age. If you buy tough Mahabharata when they are young, they won't read at all. You buy simple books with illustration and, you know, and read with them. First you read loud, then you read, tell them to read, you be with them. Then they read. After reading, you make a habit. Every week you should read these books. You have to sit with them. You have to work very hard to make this habit. And once they start, they get hooked up, then you don't have to worry. Parents have to do a lot more work for children's education nowadays, apart from teachers. Then don't buy things. Be minimalistic, I will tell you. Don't buy things what your children want. Always, if they want four, buy one. That is after waiting for some time. You show, for various reasons, you should be minimalistic because for the earth's sake, for environment's sake, then to appreciate a small joy like good rain, a you know, all a flower blooming, you know, all these things children should enjoy. That means you have to reduce buying things for them. And if you don't give that to children, you also should not buy with them. I will buy iPhone and I won't give anything to my son. It's not possible. So you buy a minimum thing what you want to buy or use compute your phone only for work and not other things. And show it to your child. Look, I'm also making minimum things. No, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Uh, there is one question from one of our panelists, Sudhaji. Uh, so the question is, teachers today are far removed from industry. Uh, would you write some stories that make school teachers peep into the world of industry and bring some gems to their classrooms? Wonderful question, sir. Would you write some stories that make school teachers Actually, peep as, into as the as world a, of industry? As a teacher, I used to teach my students with my industry experience. I used to teach them with my industry experience because fortunately I worked with Tata and I had uh, experience like, you know, how you should not get perturbed in case something happens like a computer memory fails. Okay. Whatever you have stored in the primary memory it disappears. I mean, computer related, I used to teach, but uh, I have not done that one actually. See what happened in 2005. I realized that you know I, I, I could not afford to uh, go to college. I used to teach uh, five hours a week. Uh, then I realized that I can't spend five hours in college. It was impossible for me because of my work schedule changed and my um, philanthropy work increased. Then I became more uh, irregular than my own students. So I said, it is not fair. So I resigned and I'm not teaching for the last 15 years. So I have not done anything, but it would be really nice if somebody writes, but I don't have that kind of time now because my work is so much, you know, Corona, this, that, it goes, but it will be nice. It will be nice if such books come. It's it's a great theme, actually. It can be useful for uh, quite a few of us. Um, so one last question, maybe, Sudhaji, from, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, I think there's a whole sort of channels where we are getting the questions from WhatsApp, YouTube, all of that. Uh, okay. So this question is, uh, where do you get ideas for your books? <laughs> I'm a creative person, no? <laughs> it, is the, it is the boon of Goddess Saraswati, I suppose. It is a boon of Goddess Saraswati in a simple way. Or I'm sensitive. A, a writer is always a sensitive person. And he or she looks around everything and absorbs and then converts that into writing, probably. It is an expression, actually. See, writers, music people, dancers, uh, actors, we are all... Uh, brothers and sisters, we are fine arts people who are moved by the emotions, not by money, moved by the emotions. And emotions convert into creativity. 
Sure. And then, of course, all your reading would definitely help, uh, uh, you know, the 10,000 stories reading, that you talked about, I'm sure. My reading, my experiences, I travel a lot. And then I, I work with the poorest of the poor, poor people. My canvas is large. I meet politicians, um, ministers, CMs, um, uh, uh, film actors, prostitutes, coolies, everyone. So my canvas is large. Sure. Great. So uh, thank you so much, Sudhaji, on behalf of the entire panel yes. and the uh, IIT. I, I enjoyed. And, I enjoyed. Professor. And the entire audience. No, uh, and I the enjoyed. Entire audience, uh, yeah, I just want to tell teachers one thing. This is uh, this comes in Mahabharata. Somebody asked a question to the Arjuna. Oh, Arjuna, the mighty one. You are Vijaya. You are always conqueror. You have so much money. You are Dhananjaya. Okay. You are such an intelligent person. You are Savesachi. He has 11 names actually and every name is an adjective. But you sit the uh, in the below the feet of uh, the poor Drona, a, school, a teacher who is not rich, who is not handsome, who is you, uh, you are more probably equal knowledgeable. And you know, and he has taught and he has finished. And why do you want to sit below his feet and you know, do namaskar and ask him what what will you do? What is the adnya, sir? He will ask you. Uh, you are uh, requesting him. Why you have to do all those things? Arjuna replies, "Na dhanam manakana kam." He says, "This is taught to me by my grandfather, who was a Sanskrit teacher." Okay, he said, "It is not the money. It is not the beauty. It is not the kingdom. Everything is perishable in life. If you have money, you will lose it or." You know, you when you give, you lose, you will reduce it. Your Yavana will go in two, three, you know, in 10, 20 years. Your Kirti, you do not know. When you have money, you have Kirti. When you have land, you have Kirti. When you don't have, you know, it moves on. In life, everything is, you know, trans, you know, transferable, transferable, diminishing, everything diminishes. But there is one thing which doesn't diminish in life is knowledge. This knowledge, nobody can take. Nainam chandan shastrani. Nobody can kill it. No can burn it. No can, nobody can steal it. And this knowledge is so important. The more and more you give, the more and more rich you become. You become perfect. As a teacher, I realized the more, first year I was an okay teacher. Second year I was a very good teacher. Third year I was the best teacher. Fourth year I got an award as a very good teacher and best teacher in the college. You know, the more and more you teach, your knowledge expands and you understand many things you do not know. Teaching make, made me to understand many things I do not know. And that's the reason a teacher is the richest person in knowledge. And such teacher, I salute thee. So please be proud that you are a teacher. You share the knowledge with so much. The knowledge, what you give, cannot be killed, cannot be dissected, cannot be burned, cannot be stolen. That can change their life. You are giving a magic wand to your student. He comes or she comes as a sugar cane and you make them a sugar and send them in a packet. You are converting their lives. You are the most important person making a great impression, a great transfer in their lives. Be proud you are a teacher. And such teacher, I do namaskar. Yeah, thank you, Sudhaji. That was a wonderful message for all the teachers. They definitely do need that in today's context. Uh, so uh, on their behalf, on my own behalf, you know, I have heard of the Google 80-20 rule. I'm sure you know about that. But you gave me the 45-15 rule today. And hopefully I'll be able to implement that to the extent that, uh, you know, my IIT schedule permits me. Uh, mm -hmm. On a more personal note, you know, a big thank you for my family also. Many of them read your mm -hmm. books. My nine-year-old son is a big, huge fan. And thank he actually you. wanted to sort of, you know, he told me to convey mm -hmm. his thanks to you. Uh, okay. He has now started writing little books, just inspired by everything. Encourage, but thank you so much. Encourage that. My mother used to encourage me to write. You know, she was a school teacher. She said, no writing, no dinner. Okay, that helped me a lot. <laughs> you have good dinner, better write everything. Okay. So thanks once again. Okay. Thank, yeah, you. Yeah. Jai thank Jai. you so much. Thank you. I can log off, Stay. no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So that was uh, Sudha Murthy ji. Uh, she had to take care of something urgent. Uh, her earlier plan was to be with us for the panel, but we took the questions before uh, because of her uh, schedule. 
Uh, now, I'm sure all of you would have enjoyed uh, all the remarks that were made and all the insights that uh, she offered. Um, again, thank you very much to her. I would now like to introduce you to a very special speaker for the day, uh, Sushri Valentina Trivedi ji. Uh, Valentina ji is a writer, performer, and educator who straddles various mediums, giving all her work a unique stamp of inherent creativity. She grew up on a healthy diet of storybooks, both in her mother tongue, Hindi, and in English. She wears several hats of copywriter, scriptwriter, filmmaker, editor, director, performer, storyteller, all choices which have encompassed storytelling in one way or the, or the other. Among the performance forms she is adept at is the Stangui, the revived art of ancient Urdu storytelling. Apart from performing, she also adapted Satyajit Ray's film, Gupi Gne Bagha Bine into a Dastan, translating and including its songs as well. She enjoys adapting, expanding and scripting folk tales for performative storytelling. Her repertoire of storytelling includes Ao Suno Kahani, a video and audio channel of stories for listeners of all ages that she started with a friend. Passionate about children and learning, she specializes in approaching the learning process from a child's perspective and has been invited to numerous educational forums to share her views on the teaching learning process and learning that goes beyond acquiring subject knowledge. She believes in lifelong learning of all stakeholders and so holds workshops for teachers and parents pan India. She has worked in both the formal and informal sectors, proactively initiating and encouraging community endeavors and sharing her learning. She is the first alumna to be a member of the Board of Governors of the Dune School. On a more personal note, Valentina ji, uh, you know, I can easily connect that you're a great storyteller. And like me, believe in its amazing power at not just transforming education, but even transforming lives. And that is what I could see when I talked to you for the first time on the phone. I did not feel I'm talking to a stranger, uh, probably because ideas match and also because you're such a wonderfully expressive person. So thank you so much for sparing your time for us today. I request you to share your thoughts on how storytelling can be integrated with the school system of today. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you, Professor Bolia. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, it's a pleasure to uh, virtually meet people who are listening in right now. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to be here, actually. And uh, I'm going to start by telling you a story. Because what happens is when we grow up, and this I've asked in uh, workshops, uh, you know, where I asked teachers, I said, when was the last time somebody asked you, Kahani Sunoge? And they say, oh very long time ago. Oh, my grandmother used to tell me stories. Or somebody will say, oh, no, my grandchild asked me that and he tells me stories. But anyway, here I am telling you, starting with a story. So this is a very simple short story from ancient times. And uh, some of you might have already heard it, but I still invite you to listen in carefully. So it's a story about 10 friends. And the 10 friends decided to go on a journey. And they started out from home and they walked and walked and walked and they came to a river. And since the river was not too deep, they waded through it, reached the other side and were going to uh, proceed further when one of them said, wait, 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 let's do a head count. Let's make sure all of us are here. And they said, yes, that is a wise idea. So this person starts counting and he goes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <gasps> Just nine people. Oh, oh my God, one of us is missing. And another friend says, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. You can't count. Let me count. And this friend goes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <gasps> no tenth person. Oh, my goodness. You are right. You are right. One of our friends has drowned. Oh, oh, and they start lamenting. And they sit down by the river. And they are crying and lamenting and wailing for their lost friend. And along comes a wise man, as wise men often do in Indian stories. And he sees them crying. And he says, what's the matter? Why are you crying? And they said, oh, sir, we are so sad. We've lost a friend. There were 10 of us when we started out from home. And one of us has drowned. We crossed this river, but now there are only nine. And of course, the wise man, being wise, immediately realizes what the problem is. And he said, no, I think you're wrong. I think there are 10 of you. 
And they say, no, no, sir, we've counted, we've counted. We know there's just nine of us. So he says, humor me, count again. And this one starts, one of the people, he goes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. See? And at this point, the wise man turns his hand and says, there, you are the tenth man, Dashamastwamasi. And this man says, oh, the tenth person has been found. We are all complete. Our group is complete. Thank you. Thank you. I am the tenth person. I am the tenth person. And they proceed on their journey. And the wise man goes wherever he was going. Now, this is a very short, simple story. But this short story can be used to illustrate seven steps of the spiritual journey according to Vedant. Now, I'm not here to propagate Vedant, but I'm here to show you the power of a story. So let's see the seven steps. So the first step is Agyan, ignorance, where they can't see the 10th man. You can't see the 10th man. You can't see that you are pure consciousness yourself. The second step is ignorance leading to error. Agyan leading to Adhyas, where you think that the 10th man has drowned. The third step is adhyas leading to shok, dukkha, ignorance, error, and error leading to sorrow. The fourth step, along comes a wise man. And this is paroksha gyan. So a wise man comes or the guru comes or books or scriptures and they tell you something. They tell you about your own true nature. And you read it, you listen to it, you think about it, you hear, from, you hear it from others, but you are not sure. You're open to thinking about it, but you're not sure because you haven't experienced it yourself. Then the next step is direct knowledge. Aparoksha gyan, where you say, ah, aham brahmasmi, the 10th man has been found. And then the sixth step, is Dukhnivritti. Sorrow is gone. And closely followed is the seventh step, which is Ananda Prapti. Joy, bliss, fulfillment, because nothing is lacking. So that is the power of a story, a simple story of 10 men and giving you seven steps of the spiritual journey in terms of Vedant. Now, in our ancient, I mean, from ancient times, we've had this, uh, you know, uh, teaching learning methodology, which worked so well. There was Shravan or listening with deep interest with the intention of growing and learning. And then there was Manan, deep, honest, contemplative self-inquiry. Then there was Chintan, reflecting on a problem and trying to solve it. And then Shanka Samadhan, removal of doubts. So we've always had this as a very effective teaching learning methodology. And why it is not there in today's classrooms is something we need to be asking ourselves because this then led to two very vital aspects of learning. Vivek or discrimination and original thought Malik Soj. And these four resulted in that. So we have to, we as teachers have to think about what we are doing in the classroom and why is this not happening? Why is there not enough of Malik Soj? Why is there not enough of Vivek or discernment? Because as uh, Einstein said, education is what is left when you've forgotten what you learned in school. So we have to focus on that which will stay with the students long after they've passed out from school. Uh, so today I'm going to unravel a few layers of uh, uh, stories in the classroom and their benefits. And some of them are apparent and some of them are not so apparent, but let's start the journey. So here I have with me a doll. And uh, as most of us know that this doll has other dolls inside it. But for someone who doesn't know that, this is the only thing they see. They just know of this one doll, right? 
and this is often how stories are looked at that it is just entertainment you know a feel good factor you listen to a story you feel good it's a happy start and that's it yeah okay but even the experience of listening is very very valuable and why is that so because in a typical classroom say of uh, 40 children every child knows his place in the class so if it is a maths class i know that okay i am a weak student or if it's a biology class i know i am a good student so there is this awareness of where the child is but when he or she listens to stories he forgets that so listening to stories is a great equalizer you know because you don't have to get marks you do you can be relaxed and you can be listening to a story right another thing stories do if you walk into a classroom often times i would uh, when i was uh, you know monitoring schools and all i would go and i would see walk into a classroom and the teachers trying to quiet the kids and say be quiet you at the back sit down don't make a noise Shh. keep quiet you don't have to do any of that you walk into the classroom and you say i'm going to tell you a story and the children will quieten down so it gets their attention now before going any further i want all of you listening and watching to think of your favorite teacher take a minute it doesn't take long to think of your favorite teacher right then think of why he is your favorite teacher he or she now chances are that it's not because you got great marks in the subject chances are that it's some personal attribute of the teacher which affected you in some way and that is why that teacher is your favorite teacher so please remember that you know that is the kind of teacher you have to be so that your students like uh, sudha ji was saying remember you many years later and come back to you and say oh we remember what you taught us and not the subject but beyond that so anyway so this builds curiosity uh, the listening experience is an equalizer and it generates ideas and opinions right <clears throat> also it motivates learning and receptivity to learning so research has shown that any point made during a story or immediately after a story is better received better retained also children who are academically not so strong and who have low motivation levels are better able to listen speak read and work in the context of stories so that was what the experience of listening was like now let's open this doll and see one more layer listening creating and telling stories so stories in the classroom should not just be limited to teachers telling stories to the children children should also get a chance to create and tell stories why because it builds self esteem it builds confidence it builds confidence about uh you know in speaking uh, to people and also needless to say language skills so your vocabulary grammar i think there was a question about grammar so vocabulary and grammar and sequencing and um pronunciation and expressive language skills diction voice modulation all of that is taken care of if there are stories being listened to and being told in the classroom right <clears throat> so uh i am reminded of this one child who was a grade 3 child i walked into this grade 3 classroom and the teacher and she was a wise teacher and uh, she said okay we have this student who tells very nice stories and she's going to tell us all a story and i said okay yes let's listen to the story and i sat down and this child had a lisp so she would speak with a lisp but yet she told a story in a completely uninhibited manner and the story was brilliant her telling was brilliant and her classmates clapped for her so i was very amazed and i was very happy to see 
that she was not conscious of the fact that she was lisping because her teacher had had the good sense to promote the special talent of hers and to encourage it. So that is how self-esteem is definitely uh, a big thing for when kids tell stories. OK. Uh, just. <clears throat> Hmm. OK. And another thing that creating and telling stories does is enhance your imagination, of course. And a lot of times when I'm doing a teacher's uh, workshop, I ask the teachers, I said, OK, they say, oh, imagination, imagination, because it's a nice word. It's a very impressive word. And it should be enhanced and it should be encouraged and it should be developed. But then I ask them, so what's the big deal about imagination? Does it help you get maths and science or maths or something? And then they said, no, not really. Then I said, why develop it? Why waste your time and energy developing imagination if it doesn't do anything? And then they think for a while. And I wait. And after some time, maybe some teacher will stand up and say, but imagination isn't uh, is the basis of a lot of things. Yes, if there was no imagination, you and I would still be living in the caves. So that is how important imagination is. You know, It helps you think out of the box. It takes you away from right and wrong answers. So that's what stories do. Listening to a story, telling a story, creating a story all develops the imagination. And imagination is important even in crafting a good answer. Another thing that telling speak, uh, telling and listening and creating stories does is improve comprehension. And that's a big one. That's a big one because we all know that uh, comprehension is the basis of learning in all subjects. And children suffer because their comprehension is not good. I mean, math problems uh, are not being understood. Computation is known. But because the child can't understand the language, he can't do the sum. So comprehension is something which is a direct result. An improvement in comprehension is something which is a direct result of stories in the classroom. So if you want your uh, students' performance to uh, get better in all the subjects, bring stories in the classroom. Don't keep them out. Don't think it's a waste of time. Bring them in. Bring them in. Uh, now, before moving on, to the third layer, I have another question. Think of your closest friend. Again, it doesn't take long to think of your closest friend. Another part of the question. Is your closest friend a good listener? Chances are you're all saying yes. And that is what listening does, which is this part we are talking about, the third part. Listening brings people closer. And that is a skill we really need to develop. Because there is a great emphasis on communication skills. You know, right from the time a child is young, parents want them to speak up, speak loudly, speak boldly, speak well, goes to the school, take part in drama, take part in debate, take part in elocution, take part in recitation, all of that. I mean, I, uh, this young teacher who was a pre-primary teacher once told me, she said, you know, I have parents of three-year-old, come, uh, three-year-olds coming to me and saying, uh, make my child speak with confidence. But what we forget is, that speaking is just one half of communication. And the other more important half is listening. And we are not really teaching that. How are we teaching that? We are not even acknowledging listening. So let me um, take you on a short communication journey of a child, okay? 
Now, all of us have gone through it. All of us have seen this happen. So I'm sure you'll identify with it. So you're a little baby. The child is a little baby. And he's looking around at the world. And he's drooling. And he's burping. And everybody is looking at him very happily. And everybody keeps encouraging him to speak. Bulu, bulu, bulu. Dada, bulu. Mama, bulu. Bulu, bulu. Ah, mama. Ah, dada. And one day, one magical day, which would be marked in the baby books by parents, the child says, Dad, Dad. <gasps> oh, and the parents are delighted. And they say, Oh, Pichi, will you, Pichi, will you, Dada, Dada. And he says, Dada. And he looks around and he says, My goodness. I mean, this is what the child must be thinking. <gasps> wow, I, I did something and everybody seems very happy and everybody is rejoicing. And from then on, Every word he or she speaks is met with jubilation. Oh, dada, oh, mama, mama, oh, baby, oh, George. Okay, all this happens. Then he goes to school. And then he's told to sit down quietly. Don't speak. Shh. Don't make a noise. Sit. Shh. What do you think he feels? Suddenly, his world has turned upside down. Worse. He grows a little older and he's told at home, don't keep asking questions. Zada bag bag mat karo. Chup rao. Baat mano. Kehna mano. Ha? Bado ka kehna mano. Don't answer back. Don't argue. Huh? And in the classroom again, keep quiet. Sit down. Sit still. Only speak when it's your turn. So two, three things here. There was this little girl and she went to school. First day of school, she was very excited. She had a new uniform. Some children are. I cried a lot when I went to school. I kept crying for a couple of months. But some children are really happy with the new uniform and their tiffin box and their bag and their water bottle and all. And this was once a child and she went to school happily. And she came back with a really sad face. And she went up to her mother and she said, Mama, I don't think you should be sending me to school. And her mother was horrified. She said, oh my goodness, what's happened to my child? She was so happy in the morning. What happened? Did somebody bully her? Was the teacher too strict? What happened? Did she get hurt? And she said, what happened, child? What happened? What happened? And this child, who's just come back from the first day of school, says, I can't, I can't read or write and they won't let me speak. Oh, you know, my heart goes out to children who go to school and are told, are met with this. And this is when we know that listening, speaking, reading, writing have all to be given equal importance, have all to be connected and working together for language development to happen, for literacy to happen. And yet we said, keep quiet. Uh, so unlike that little child, I was quite fortunate in having grown ups around me who never stopped me from speaking. And uh, I'll share this little anecdote uh, with you. Uh, so I grew up, of course, in the pre computer era, and pre cell phone and pre a lot of things which are there to distract everybody's minds and attention spans now. And uh, whenever we had a visitor, I used, to, I used to love reading storybooks, both like um, in Hindi, which is my mother tongue, and in English. And anybody who came home to visit, I would go up to them and I would say, Kahani sunao, Kahani sunaye. And very often, as adults do, you know, trying to get out of something which the child wants them to do, they would say, Yad nia rie. I don't know any story. But then I would say, <laughs> and I would have them sitting there and I remember once or twice my parents are getting tired and they are feeling sleepy and once I remember quietly my parents sneaked out of the room and because they had had enough but there I was and there was this person who patiently sat and listened to me. I cannot tell you uh, 
the depth of benefits of that unhone mujhe tab suna aur mujhe sunane diya gaya isliye aaj main yahan aapko suna rahi hu ye sab okay coming back to what happens to the child so parents at my workshops often tell me are baat hi sunta hai so till age 12 children are being told to keep quiet so typically till that age parents are saying doesn't listen he doesn't listen she doesn't listen and then when they become teenagers parents say they don't talk so obviously we are doing something very wrong and stories is an excellent way to address that because it teaches you to listen and i cannot overemphasize the value of listening you your closest friend is a good listener right and listening is the basis not listening is the basis of all conflict in our world today if two people were listening to each other if two neighbors were listening to each other if people of two communities were listening to each other if people of two regions were listening to each other if people of two countries were listening to each other there won't be so much conflict but we forgotten to listen we only say what we believe in and that's it we forgotten to listen and listening actually teaches you a very very fine human value which is empathy because till you listen you cannot even begin to feel sympathy i mean empathy is another step ahead so it teaches you to listen carefully it teaches you to understand the other person it teaches you to read between the lines next time you're having a conversation with someone just pause and observe yourself okay don't pause keep listening and talking but observe yourself a lot of times what passes off for listening is just waiting for my turn to speak so somebody in front of you is saying something to you and you are thinking of what you're going to say what you're going to say and it's rather funny sometimes when you observe this so person says oh i had a wonderful holiday in himachal and you know when the snow was so good and the mountain was so good and all and that comes the next person oh but you know when i went to kashmir i saw snow oh my goodness it was so good and suddenly i wonder i said there are two people having a conversation but both of them are speaking so who is listening so please stories in the classroom will encourage children to listen and when they are listening listening is not a passive activity and stories when i say in the classroom please i mean i've been to schools where the pre primary classrooms have these smart boards and things like that and the pre primary teacher who should be the most active physically active person in the class is standing with her hands tied and there is some cartoon playing and when i have sort of express my horror at it i have been told but ma'am this is uh, you know the hare and the tortoise story and these are moral stories rubbish if it's on a screen it's not good for a child as simple as that and we are a nation with a i mean we have uh, i cannot even i mean look at the the vedas the upanishads the gita the purans the panchatantra the jatak tales hitopadesh there is so much katha sarit sagar as sudha ji mentioned there is there are so many stories there is so much really good literature to listen to and that kind of listening actually uh, you know uh, not just uh, works at that moment it builds you from inside it builds your core how and why we we'll listen to that a little later but uh, so that is about listening now uh, you know the dalai lama has been lecturing for decades i think he came to india in 1958 and you know it's been over half a century and he's been talking and people have been listening to him and uh, i was living in delhi till last year and i would see that you know whenever the dalai lama was in town and he was lecturing at one of the biggest auditoriums in delhi 
it was packed to capacity. People were sitting in the aisles and there were long sneaking queues outside. People wanting to get in, people desperate to get in, people pleading to get in. Why? Because he was speaking on how to be happy. And it occurred to me, I said, he has been speaking for decades. And then I was listening to a video of his talk and there were people asking questions at the end of that. And the questions were the same old, same old variations of the same old. And it struck me that people are asking questions, but they're not listening. Because if they were listening, then they wouldn't still be seeking happiness. They would be happy because that's what he's been saying. And his message is so profound and so simply delivered that if we really, really listen, we should be able to get it. So that's the other thing. We go for uh, people who are coming for his darshan, unke darshan, but not following unka darshan, you know, not following his philosophy. Unke darshan ho gaye. Oh, it was very nice. We saw the Dalai Lama. I have a picture with the Dalai Lama. I'm putting it on Facebook. I'm getting lots of likes, lots of... And that's it. But I haven't listened to his message. Unke darshan kar liye, par unka darshan nahi sikha. Because I wasn't listening. So that is what, how important listening is. You know, from the very, very uh, simple little things to, okay, another uh, uh, sort of a personal anecdote I want to share very quickly. So my four-year-old son uh, was uh, walked into the kitchen and I was cooking and my back was to the entrance to the kitchen and he walked in and he said, Mama, I want to do something great. And I said, like a typical mother, I said, yes, yes, my baby will do something great, of course. And I'm going on, uh, of course, I'm hearing and I'm responding. I'm not really listening. I'm listening, but I think I, I so then again, he repeated his query. Mama, I want to do something great. Yes, of course, my beta will grow up to do something great. That time, his voice was a little uh, impatient. Mama, I want to do something great. So I turn around and he's standing with a grater in his hand. He wants to grate something. And I laughed and I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I wasn't listening to you carefully. Uh, so that is listening. And I mean, this is something I can go on and on about for hours, but I will not. Uh, so let's come to the next thing. What was the next thing? Okay. The next thing. Oops. Give me a second. These dolls are very eager to come out. Uh, not yet, you little one. Stay inside. The next thing is good questions so when engaging with stories is combined with good questions then the learning is even deeper and it works at the cognitive level <clears throat> and there are studies for it and you can look it up online but uh what i'm going to tell you is again an anecdote because just say indian stories mein hota hai, kahani ke andar, kahani ke andar, kahani ke andar, kahani ke andar. So here's another story you have to put up with. So my father went to the UK for a one year dip, uh, diploma in education that he was pursuing. This was over 40 years ago. And uh, there were a bunch of teachers and they were being taken around to uh, sort of see how teaching classroom teaching was happening in the schools over there in London. And they walked into one classroom and uh, they were sitting at the back. And the teacher comes in and uh, he writes on the blackboard. He puts down two questions and he says, today's your test. He tells the children and he writes two questions. And he said, there are your questions. Take them down and submit your answers tomorrow in the class. And this teacher from India, he went and he said, sir, but this is very strange. And he said, okay, that's it. Class over. He said, oh, this is really strange. So uh, he said, well, so... We have a different perception of tests. So this person said, but isn't this supposed to be a test? And the teacher said, of course, it's a test. So they said, but 
they have to submit the answer sheets tomorrow they will go and find out the answers and that teacher said isn't that what we want them to do and our perception about questions and answers still continues to be uh, a little topsy turvy i think so first of all questions don't necessarily need to come from teachers alone and students should not be encouraged to only ask questions about subject content and stories bringing stories into the classroom will do that because then it will make them think of different thing in a different way not just remembering facts not just you know uh, understanding at a basic level but remembering and understanding and analyzing and evaluating and creating and all of that so questions like that so uh, for an example i very i'm just going to take the story just for an example uh like the red riding hood story so typical questions would be okay who was red riding hood who was she going to meet who did she meet in the forest what did she do what did the wolf do and da 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 but how about asking so if you were red riding hood's mother would you send your child into the forest or what precautions would you take before sending your child through the forest if you were the granny what precautions would you take to fortify a house um against the wild animals and i know hots is a much is a hot topic higher order thinking skills and higher order questions but we have to change our mindset to be able to really easily freely ask those kind of questions not the ones at the back after the chapter which says okay these are the higher order skill questions or whatever no we should be able to do it from the top on the top of our head and stories allow us to do that and i know often teachers say but we don't have time to tell stories how can we tell stories but it doesn't take that long so for instance supposing uh, think of a math class okay now it doesn't have to be dreaded feared it doesn't have to be like that it can be fun how number 1 for any subject to be fun why start with a textbook don't introduce a topic with a textbook so supposing it's a math class i walk in and i'm writing on the blackboard i write 1 plus 0 is equal to when i pause and of course the class will say 1 and yes 1 minus 0 is equal to 1 and they're having fun because they think it's very silly the teacher is playing a silly game I, okay and don't underestimate being silly here let me just point it out right here silly is good silly is something that will bring you closer to your students silly is good and then you write okay 1 into 0 is equal to 0 they'll scream and you turn around and you say okay simple isn't it too simple but it wasn't always so there was somebody who came up with this before we knew how to deal with the zero somebody who came up with it and his name he was an indian mathematician called brahma gupta ha huh? leave it there two minute story over a story doesn't have to have a long beginning middle and end and once upon a time leading to happily ever after no a story is just a hook to get their attention and after that they are curious to know more after that you can delve into the topic and the topic and the story may not i mean it's all right for them to not be directly connected because it's just a hook to get their interest ha huh? and if you want to play with them a little more you can say okay brahmagupta brahmagupta was the one who gave us this he also gave us something like oh but i don't think i'll tell you about it today and sometimes what will happen is one of the students in your class will come back the next day and mom i know what else brahmagupta did he was the one who really talked about quadratic equations and what and there and you encourage that and this one child would be happy because he has come with a new bit of knowledge which is not in the pages of the textbook and you have uh 
appreciated that, encouraging other people to also come up with that knowledge. Ma'am, right. I'm really sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But if you please conclude your session. Yeah. OK. Oh, I forgot to look at the time. OK. Uh -huh. So yes, I'm sorry. Yes. This is as far as we get. And there is much more. But uh, uh, I'll have to stop here. And uh, there are many other things, values, and uh, how they can be taught through stories. I'll just take one minute to wrap up that when you are uh, teaching, I mean, don't try to teach through stories. Let it fall like gentle rain on a person, uh, on a child's mind, and let him create his own learning. And never state a moral of the story. So I'm going to stop right here. But kahani abhi baki hai mere dost. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Namisha, please. Yeah. So thank you, Valentina Ji. Thank you so much. This was absolutely wonderful. Uh, the entire range of what stories can do for you, I think that's fascinating. From uh, improvement in comprehension to improving listener skills, uh, from the difference between unke darshan and unka darshan. Uh, and I really like the way you put it when you said, you know, it is stories, of course, if it's good, if maybe they're relevant to the topic, but even if not, it's fine because they can probably be just used as a hook to get the attention of your audience. Thank you so much. Uh, we will, the uh, story is indeed Baki and we will come back to it. panel specific inputs we will we will come back to that. Uh, let me now introduce you all to the uh, next speaker for the day today. Uh, we have, I'm very delighted to tell you, we have Professor Pragnya Nupani uh, for the second time in our series. Uh, she's the founder coordinator of the BVN IAPT and Vikshika, mentored by uh, Professor L.C. Varma. She is an experiential learning expert and a subject matter in physics. Pragnya Ji has won the national award for teachers in 2017, conferred by the Vice President of India. She's conducted more than 300 experiential learning workshops in physics and science for students and teachers across India. She's done teachers training for various schools and organizations. She's designed innovative activities and events for experiential learning of physics and multidimensional learning across subjects. Uh, Pragya Ji, thank you so much for coming uh, again and uh, gracing this webinar with your presence. Uh, you know, after principles on why stories are important and how they can uh, you know, possibly be done in a school setting and what can be entailed, uh, what can we expect out of that. Uh, we have with you Pragya Ji who will talk about how problem solving can be done through stories, uh, taking from her own examples and her own experiences as one of the most liked teachers in her school. Thank you Pragya Ji, thank you so much. Uh, over to you please. Thank you so much uh, Professor Bulia. It's indeed uh, a pleasure to be here. Uh, my earliest memories of a story um, uh, telling how problems are solved was told by my grandfather, who was a freedom fighter. And he led uh, in Rajasthan, Bijolia Satyagraha. Uh, so during that, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the common man rose up uh, to protest. And uh, it was the ladies in the big havelis used to stay behind the curtains. And they were eager to know what was happening. And sometimes they used to help the, uh, the revolutionaries in untold ways. So now uh, these uh, ladies, were, they were behind Parda. They could not come out and meet people in common uh, public. So how to send the information to them? So my grandfather used to tell me it was those Mehtranis. जो सड़के साफ करती थी वो गाना गाते गाते जो आ, हो रहा था चारों तरफ they used to sing the information in their songs and these people who were living behind the curtains uh, these ladies they would come to know what was happening and then offer whatever help they could offer so this was an amazing solution to a problem anyway so uh, during my teaching career uh, you know, I heard so many stories and the normal stories have a hero, a tragedy and hero comes out flying and there is a moral lesson to learn for all of us, uh, apart from, of course, the enjoyment. 
I just enjoyed Valentina ji's narration so much that I was scared of forgetting what I have to say. It was a wonderful narration. But then today I am going to tell you a story which is slightly different, and this story is set in Kashmir in the backyard of Mirza Ali Bey. So in the backyard of Mirza Ali Bey, there are tall oak trees, and there is a squirrel called Cheeks. and she has been named cheeks by the bags because her cheeks are always full of acorns the the seeds the fruits of the uh, tree oak tree and she is always eating them and her cheeks are full of that so you know one fine morning uh, cheeks is uh, sitting in her nest of leaves high in the uh, oak tree above the uh, mirza bags backyard and it was early morning and the fog lay like a ca- cotton quilt across the valley and cheeks scratched her beautiful gray hairy flurry body and uh, looked down about the nest all around and then she felt the warm august morning air and fluffed up her big flurry tail and shook it and then she was uh, you know uh, so excited and she said i have work to do today she thought and imagined the fat acorns to be gathered and stored in the coming of the cold times now the tough part was for the cheeks was not getting the fruits of the oak tree there were plenty of trees for more and more acorns for all the squirrels which were living in that particular yard no the problem was not finding them now but the problem was finding them later when the air would become cold and a white stuff would cover the whole uh, lawn everywhere and cheeks you know she had a very good smeller and she could smell the acorns uh, very easily and uh, but the problem was that if she hid the corn a corn somewhere how would she come to know where she had hidden them that was a big problem so that fine morning she just went around eating lot of acorns because she also had to make herself fat and pre- be prepared for the coming times then suddenly you know she saw a dark patch where the sun was not there and she saw the dark patch had a particular shape and one end of that dark patch was just going inside uh, the ground where the trees a tree just came out of the ground and the other side of the dark patch just lay freely on the ground and suddenly cheek had an idea she said okay now i know what i'm going to do i'll hide an acorn here just where this dark patch ends and she dug and put one acorn there and covered it and looked around nobody was looking <coughs> then she congratulated herself wow you have a small brain but today you have been very smart cheeks you've done a wonderful job and then she went around and everywhere she found a dark patch wherever the dark patch ended away from the tree she put one acorn there and the whole week passed like this she kept on looking at those dark patches and wherever they would finish she just uh, dug them up put one acorn there and covered them up and she was very happy and eating also and hiding the acorns and uh you know uh, getting fatter and fatter and then the season changed and the whole lawn gradually became white and she thought that now is not the time for me to run around and she went up in her uh, nest of leaves and just uh, just uh, squeezed herself under the leaves and uh, kept herself warm and then it was a long cold time where she just slept and slept and and then one fine morning she saw that okay yes the white fluff is still there but the sun is shining and the sun was shining bright and nice and she shook her body stretched her body and shook her fluffy tail and then she saw today is the day when i should go down and eat something i'm hungry and running came down the tree uh, cheeks ran around and then she said okay i now remember that it was the dark patch end of the dark patch where i had uh put my hidden my acorn she goes there and she digs and she digs and she digs and she digs no acorn 
what did i do i had hidden my account here only okay maybe it was not here then she went to the other dark patch and then at the end she dug and she dug and she dug and she dug and she dug nothing no account she just went crazy she said what what has happened and she ran around every dark patch at the end she dug up but she could not find a single account poor cheeks she's just sitting there and crying she's just crying and she's hungry children can you help her can you help her how she can find her accounts what happened to those accounts so now this is a story which i i can tell in a class grade 2 i can tell it in grade 4 i can tell it in grade 6 and what would be the advantage of this story how this story is different from other stories in all the stories you know you just heard some stories there are heroes there are people maybe more than one hero and this is a difficult situation just as cheeks is in the difficult situation but here cheeks is also a not hero she is helpless she is somebody whom you to help and the real hero is the student who has to now find out the answers and solve the problem for cheeks for the hero for the main character in the story and this is an open ended story where students can find more than one answers if we ask this in the class one student says ma'am another squirrel ate uh, uh, a corn then somebody says hat sare sare corn thodi kha legi koi dusri squirrel wo that wo those seeds have grown into uh, plants into trees now because so much so many months have passed then somebody says but maybe some other animal ate those Uh, a cons then a child comes up and says you know those dark patches were shadows so what if they were shadows you know the shadows don't stay at the same place they move oh my god so you know now this is an opportunity for the whole class to pitch in for the whole class to find answers to this mystery so this is a situation where we are giving problems to the children and children have a free run of their imagination and thinking to offer solutions and why i came upon this because i realized that in our teaching in our methodology we are hardly putting children into situations where they have a problem to solve and a problem which really relates to their own life the uh, the story enables them to connect with characters or situations which are within uh, their uh, surroundings or at the uh, at that mental level where they can identify with the characters in the story so the problem of the characters in the story becomes their own problem and they are put to thinking and if there are multiple solutions then every child feels that he or she can contribute and it is open for uh, accepting or rejecting now now see this is not where the story end for science this is where actually the story begins and how does it begin you see there were four answers that four different children probably gave us and what were those four answers uh, the uh, one answer was of course that uh, uh, the 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 some other squirrels must have eaten right then somebody said some other animal must have eaten up now the third answer was that it germinated into a plant and the fourth one was shadows this story has been focused on the understanding about shadows but then we will see how we can take up other three Uh, options or other three solutions also as beginnings of investigation so first let us let us think about shadows so you know we have this teaching methodology that we first engage and then we elicit so what do we elicit we elicit we ask children to tell us about what 
preconceptions they have about a given situation. So the children who are saying that it was shadows uh, at the end of which uh, the cheeks had hidden the corn, then we ask them, okay, what do you know about shadows? So some children will say shadows change every day. Somebody says shadows are longer during winters. Somebody says shadow moves when you move. Now, we can use these statements as opportunities for exploration. How? We can convert these very statements into questions. If the student is saying shadows change every day, we ask, do the shadows change every day? If they say students, shadows are longer in winters, are the shadows longer or are they shorter in window, uh, winter time? Then when they are saying shadows move when you move, so we ask the question, do the shadows move when you move? So now we have been able to garner from the students any preconceptions that they have about the situation and then we have converted them into further opportunities, into opportunities for further exploration. And then uh, we ask the children to focus on the very questions that they think are relevant to Cheek's dilemma. So children, we allow the children to select the questions that they would like to further investigate. So maybe some uh, 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 discussion goes on and then the children come to uh, unanimous uh, opinion that, okay, two questions are important out of many. Many more may be there. I'm just picking up a few. Are shadows longer or shorter in winter? And do the shadows change? So now we are going to explore these questions. Let the children predict what do they think? Are the shadows longer in the winter or are they shorter? Okay, they can make a prediction that maybe the shadows are shorter. Then uh, can they make a prediction? What do they what do they think about whether the shadows move when we move? If they say yes, we think that shadows move when or shadows remain stationary, whatever they predict. Now we have to find a way to test these predictions. And how do we find a best way to test these predictions? Let the children say. They can say that maybe we can measure the shadows. Then whose shadow should we measure? Maybe the shadow of a tree. Can you, if they start measuring the shadow of the tree, is it remaining the same or long? If it becomes long, maybe it goes out of the school wall. Will they be able to measure? So what object should we take? Whose uh, shadow can be measured? How we can keep a record? How will we... Now, what do the records tell you? So all these, uh, all these designing of how they can test their predictions can be taken from the students as way of their suggestions. And then we can together design a fair test. Students understand something about fair test. That uh, what should we keep same every day? Should we keep the timing when we are measuring the size of the shadow same? Why we should do that? Depending upon the class of the student, this can be decided. And then, you know, if there are children who are young, let's say in class two, every day they can measure the shadow of a pencil. And uh, if they do not know how to measure with a scale, we could take the pieces of colorful wool and may, uh, put it across the length of the shadow and place them on a uh, chart paper for them every day to see. And then when they record the observation in this colorful way, they can gradually see over the weeks throughout the year how the shadow is changing, whether it is becoming longer or shorter. So normally as you move deeper into the winter, the shadows become smaller. Then we can ask them to evaluate what would happen Would the, if you come to the next September or next winter, would the shadows go on reducing and disappear forever? Because they have not yet connected it with the seasons or the cyclic nature of the seasons or why the shadows are formed. So, so along with this, we can extend this, uh, this story uh, into other kind of investigations where we can give them a lamp 
and a pencil and then they can put the lamp all around and see what is the direction of the shadow made how the shadow changes when you take the lamp away or bring it near and so on and so forth so the thing is that this option gave an opportunity to experimentally explore to experimentally design uh, setups and allow the students to gather data and then how to tabulate the data meaningfully so that you can infer something from it and then allow them to evaluate compare okay so this was one option now what about the other options some children also said that the seeds must have grown into trees now can they be allowed to explore that maybe they can put some seeds in the refrigerator and see whether they grow or does the does the seed grow only in the soil or does it grow in the snow okay even if you put some uh, some uh, soil and then you put that uh, seed into it and then it co gets covered with the snow how long does it take to uh, to germinate it does will it grow into such a big tree within this uh, span of 3 4 months that uh, the the uh, the seed would just disappear and uh, the the place would not would still look the same so these kind of exploration can uh, further throw more light more understanding uh, about the germination of seeds in what situation it germinates how long it takes to grow into a tree and so on and so forth but you remember there were also uh, solutions about uh, how some other child, other animals might have eaten the acorns now this could be a very good opportunity to make children research they if the children are young it could also become a family time where parents sit together on the internet and together they explore about animals which could probably be living in the same uh, climate in same environment would they be what are those animals who eat acorns so this again is a a, a, now, a lane down which children can travel and get habituated to research then what about the last example uh, the la first solution where children said that uh, other uh, squirrels must have eaten now this has no experimental or research investigation possible so how we can take a turn it into an opportunity for learning so now maybe we can encourage students to write stories where cheeks is a star detective and she <coughs> and she takes part <coughs> excuse me into multiple adventures that are taking place in the backyard of ms ali beg's house and children can imagine these stories and write what were the adventures through which uh, cheeks and other uh, cheeks underwent and how she found out the thief uh, squirrel who ate all the acorns so so you see this is how this story offers a lot of opportunity for ex, uh, further exploration if the same story is given to elder uh, students maybe grade 5 maybe grade 6 we can connect it to many more things that how the shadow changes during the day how the shadow is bigger in the morning how it is smaller in the day time and in the evening how, how it increases in size and why the shadow is not a, a, a just a point uh, at midday about all this they can collect data <coughs> using nomon they can design their own setups then they can uh, it can be connected to the sunrise and sunset time which they can find out from the newspapers and calculate the length of the day then how the uh, the uh, axis of the earth is tilted and so on and so forth the apart the the ideas are endless and in fact that is another thing that extending uh, we have uh, we have had already how to engage how to elicit 
how to explore and how to explain uh, their results, then evaluate and then extend also uh, as to what more could be done with this opportunity. So uh, this is uh, one kind of stories where uh, children will love, uh, children will appreciate and experience how science is done or how in real life we are supposed to solve problems. That is the purpose of our learning, that is the purpose of education. And that is one of the very big lacunae in our education that we have curriculum of topics. We don't have curriculum of problems which children should be solving. And as, uh, as NEP is telling us that the children should be able to think, uh, they should be able to solve problems and we should be flexible. We should provide them open-ended situations. So such stories are able to uh, provide an ideal uh, platform in which we can nurture these kind of uh, capabilities and skills. Uh, Professor Bolia, how much time do I have still? Do I have time for one more story? No, uh, Prakashji, I think uh, let's go to the panel now. I think we can take up uh, further ideas there. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Pragya ji. Uh, I would now like to invite you again with uh, Miss uh, with Mrs. Valentina ji and Pradeep ji for the panel discussion. I would like to hand over to Professor Bolia for take, to take it further. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Ruchika. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Pragya ji. These were some wonderful ideas with a very specific example or other two examples of how stories can be useful for problem solving. Uh, we will come to more questions uh, based on that soon, Pragyaji, in this panel. Uh, but before that, let me introduce you to our uh, panelist who has not been introduced so far, Shri Padeep Kumar Das Gupta ji. Uh, he, he has done his school education from Majira National Basic Education Institution, Gandhian Ashram School. Uh, Pradeep ji, Please pardon me if I pronounced it wrong. Please correct it when, when uh, you speak. He has done his B.Ed. from YCMOU Diploma in Higher Education from Mumbai University and MSc from Wilson College, Mumbai. Pradeep Ji was a junior college physics teacher in Siddharth School of College of Arts, Science and Commerce. He was a visiting faculty for CBS Mumbai University for about seven years and is an IAPT activist. He has worked as a resource person in physics, astronomy, in Junior Science Olympia, uh, was a team leader at the Junior Astro Olympia team in Kazakhstan in 2010, uh, IOAA in China in 2011, and in the Junior Science Olympiad in 2014 in Argentina, also in uh, 2017 Junior Science Olympia. Uh, Pradeepji is now working as a mantri for the Nai Talim Samiti, Gandhian Education, which specially focuses on rural education and the lower economic, lower social economic students. Pradeep ji, with your extensive work on the ground, I request you to please share your experiences of how you were able to clear scientific concepts of the children in remote areas using storytelling when equipment probably would be more of a challenge. You would not have a lot of technology and tools to help you out. Over to you, Pradeep ji. Thank you. Thank you. Am I audible? Good enough? Yes, you are. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, most of the points, actually, I must thank uh, Valentina ji, Sudha ji, and uh, Pradna ji to uh, have explained many things in detail. Uh, but I found that uh, Gandhi ji had already addressed all those issues, most of the issues, I would say, in his uh, Naitalim uh, concept of education. And that is, I'm very happy that the new education policy has taken up a lot of uh, it in, uh, in its stride. Now, uh, to address this issue, uh, since I was from a rural background and uh, spent uh, my entire schooling in a, in a village and also moved on to uh, the a city like Mumbai, I realized that where the gap lies. Storytelling elaborately has been explained. And uh, one thing I would defer to you, sir, uh, there is no dearth of equipment if you look around. The entire nature is your laboratory, your sky is your laboratory. Mm -hmm. The pencil shadow, which was uh, stated, can be taken from the poles. 
But uh, while I was talking about the stories, I found at many places uh, after my retirement from Siddharth College, I moved on to uh, even before that, we were having some teachers' workshops. What was uh, more important to me was tell them the real life stories of the scientists and the discoveries. What led to the discoveries? So, when you are talk, teaching any topic or discussing a topic, I normally don't use the word teaching. I share my experience and my learning with the others. Let me narrate all those to the students. So when it comes to the gravitation, you have to tell the story of Newton and the apple. But unfortunately, the story is a little different from what is being told. My appeal to all the audience is, please go to the stories, which are the root stories. It was not just the coincidence that the apple fell and uh, Newton discovered. It was the entire background of socioeconomic things. And today it is very relevant that we have been locked up due to Corona. Newton had to move into a village where you are sitting, occupied with his thoughts of all the mathematical events, all the social events that were going around. Time is running short, so I just specifically say something about it. See, uh, most of the places in the rural areas or even in urban areas in Siddharth College I was teaching was established by Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar and uh, the students came from very poor families. So equipment, one, when I tell stories or tell the activity, I must think of what are the equipments they are having access to. So in a school, as I said, a, a flagpole, it's a big, uh, big uh, device all by itself. A child can get up in the morning and uh, look at the sun every day and un understand the Earth's rotation. But all these things have to lead, in my mind today, is that they should be able to solve some real life issues, some problems. And I personally try to focus on environmental issues, which are there in cities and which are there in rural areas also. So let me give you an example in five minutes what happened in my school, which now I'm uh, helping the students to uh, cope with the gap which they had come. See, I was teaching this topic, topic of electricity. And while teaching electricity, I just kept on asking questions, series and parallel, very easy. If you have electricity in your classroom, just switch on the lights one by one and you'll be able to explain the series and parallel connections. I did that. And I, to my surprise, I found that two lights were in series and two other lights were on series. So one switch would switch off two lights. Another switch would switch on other two lights. So series and parallel resistances were clearly understood. Connections were clearly understood. Students kept on answering the questions. And as it was told by Valentina Ji, you need not tell big stories. There were uh, you know, small stories, one-liners, two-liners, they make stories. And those stories come from real life experience. And you can ask the students, what do you do? Next question was that, okay, the other part was the electric bill. I'm placing this for all the teachers and students and parents to use these tools, which are they, they have in their hands. What are the, what, how do you get the electric bills? How do you calculate the powers? We listed out each, the student hostels, rooms, power supplies, what are the devices, all those things. And immediately the answer came quickly from all of them. And they calculated the amount of light they would consume. OK, next question. This is winter. You are hardly using your fan. Are you using your fan? No. They're off. It's quite cold. In the night or so, daytime, we are out. So what about summer? Will you have the same bill? Again goes the calculations. They come out with the idea. OK, do you have refrigerators in your homes? Yes. Some of them, yes. 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 OK, how do you open the refrigerator? And how do you put things inside it? Uh, no, some of them did not bother too much. Then I became very specific. Where do you keep the water bottle? Where do you keep the eggs? Where do you keep the milk? Why? Again, the story came. Oh, it is very handy. Door, you can see what it is. And then finally, I come to the point. Now, you know the conduction, the hot air goes up, cold air comes down. If you keep the fridge open for a longer time, then the cold air goes out, the hot air gets in, the fridge will work for a longer time. So what happens to your bill? OK, 
if i keep it long and keep the lights on for a long time and when i don't need them if i keep the lights on for a day time what do you call it well in bengali they immediately reply it is a waste the bengali word is apachay i was very happy to know because apachay is something that we are doing so what is the moral of the story moral in the story we stop apachay we stop wastage why do it should you stop wastage okay there is plenty again i come back to gandhi gandhi has said very clearly the nature provides enough for everybody but not enough for one's greed if you go on wasting and extract only that much from nature that you can replenish and what is the challenge today see the weather report what is the moral you draw yes there is global warming what is happening uh, yes hamare yahan to yes safal fasal ka bahut problem ho gaya tha there was unseasonal rain and all these things okay, they really recollected everything and then we come to the point should we waste the answer everyone gave no here comes a physics lesson here comes a nature lesson and here comes a lesson for survival again we said the time is short we can go on narrating several experiences my appeal to all my listeners here is that please think of life please think of life when it is how do you imagine stories sudha ji has told her stories come from life anything in your life you do it becomes a story get stories from there get that event the event act as you say turn into an opportunity and that will give you the proper answer See, I would end by saying that we need to understand children. Yes, but in, we need to understand ourselves first. What is our positive points? What is our negative points? Why children do not understand? That was a big question. Uh, here, I must add here. Before I embarked on all my work, other than my employment. i with a, another friend of mine went on surveying different schools and kept on asking our science teachers what difficulty do you face i had received a very interesting answer from one of the schools in a rural area but it was a reputed school when i asked the teacher it was in maharashtra i will not name the school and the teacher said uh amala kai alchan nahi hai pan vidyarthyanna samjhat nahi nahi i don't have any result in teaching but the students don't understand now if students not understanding is not a difficulty for a teacher then what it is and this is what the question to me and then i started searching myself yes i should first inquire myself why what why what has happened and after searching through a lot of books and psychological books i realized that the knowledge is being built built in stages you remove one brick in from in between and the entire knowledge collapses when i am telling something in the class i must know what each student in the class knows so that I, the, whatever i say they can connect it to their previous knowledge and if they can't it's my responsibility to work backwards and connect it to that person i just take the last point one child came to me in one of my friends place and uh, he was learning uh, the odd and even numbers listening as madam you have said correctly listening how much it is correctly but listening and seeing the coordination of the two how important it is i give you no, no, see listen uh, here is uh, uh, 0 2 4 6 these are even numbers all numbers ending with the even numbers 1 3 5 7 9 all number ended ending with these are even numbers uh, odd numbers fine understood yes clearly understood then i wrote down okay particular number is it even or odd it was an even number he said it is odd again i stated that again he did the same thing then i wrote down again 0 1 2 0 to 4 6 8 so now say what are these numbers okay these are numbers what are these numbers then he says everything and the other ones are odd and never made a mistake again and i realized the problem was what he was listening and what he was seeing they were not being connected to each other 
and that's what we need to do while telling even stories thank you very much thank you thank you pradeep ji that was wonderful i see that you have a very good command over bangla marathi and of course hindi and english uh, that's that's wonderful to see be probably because of your experience in all these areas now you what you said one of the things that you said pradeep ji caught my interest and uh, you know i do want to do that in my class all the time although of course it doesn't always happen very difficult to do uh, but uh, can you give an example you said of now uh, you know telling people about real life stories right scientists or whoever else can you give an example of a story that you shared let's say the story of you know einstein or newton or whatever or any other figure right? i'm just taking the arbitrary names that you thought they really helped in capturing uh um, you know people's attention and their command over concepts as well and aise koi udaharan ke sath agar aapko koi story yaad hai to please bataiye that's yes, a very uh, interesting point and that's why yeah that's the thing is that uh, you see uh, magellan story you can tell i told you once that earth was round but nobody believed and then the only way of finding it out was okay go move towards more west 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 and then one comes back to the same place so what do you do you first do it and see that it is round or not what is the ancient ideas of the earth's shape in different places you know in indian uh, mythology i normally don't quote mythology because there are certain misconceptions uh, related that is there the earth is flat and resting on the either sheshna in one place and another place there are four elephants supporting it and these four elephants are called dik gaj east west north south dik gaj so anyone knows about them is a dik gaj pandit you understand the point and one once it said that okay this was the ancient understanding then why so because your eyesight allows only a certain periphery you rise a little higher you see a bigger circle so the entire earth appears to you as a flat plate observation is one of the most important thing in science and these people were scientific but their scientific application was limited so what do we do later on when it was discovered when galileo galilei now it comes that galileo like turns his telescope towards the sky he was not the first to invent the telescope a telescope was invented before but he was the first one to turn it to the sky and discover that there are heavenly bodies moving around each other when i'm telling planetary motion here comes the planetary motion the discovery of that now why this leads newton to think why do they move each other because then the idea of the uh, this thing uh, there has to be some uh, uh, some medium, medium which will be supporting it that was not so and then newton while thinking on all these was a mathematician that started calculating things and i said that okay newton said he was looking at the apple the apple tree and the apple fell and he said oh everybody sees the apple fall maybe he thought suppose i was a an ant sitting on that apple what would i see i would see the earth falling on me so for the ant the earth fall on falls on the apple for the apple earth fall on the uh, apple for the earth earth fall on it and this might have i don't know i haven't met newton but it might have given rise to the thought that okay if this one is attracting this one is also attracting so what we are saying is they are those two things are moving towards each other and hence the theory of gravitation thank you thank you thank you that makes sense for you uh, so valentina ji we uh, we come back to our remaining story before ending uh, you said story abhi baki hai but then you said one thing which is uh, which caught my attention which was uh, you know it happened unfortunately very quickly that time is do not tell the moral of the story right and uh, yes. could you just elaborate on that a bit why do you think uh, the moral of the story yes. should not uh, be? because i think uh, you know <laughs> when you are telling a story a child's mind is building you know imagining the scenario imagining it in his mind and his own learning is being created so actually that's why that's how children learn i mean they create their own learning and they have created their own learning about a story and then you say 
moral of the story is that we should not be greedy and that whole scaffolding of learning comes crashing down and it's reduced to this one sentence which the child has not even connected to it is being fed to him like a teaspoon of bitter medicine yellow ab moral pilo kadvi dawa pilo okay pilia but all that i had built has come crashing down uh, so typically i think uh, stories should be told and allowed to fall like hum logo ne sabne kiya hoga you look up at the sky and there's rain falling on your face that is how stories should be told you have to just receive it create your own learning because if all four of us were to uh, listen to one story we will each one of us create our own learning about it and that is the way it should be not somebody else telling you that iska ye matlab hai uh, so sure so yeah so letting them discover right that's the eventual point that you are that you're making although i believe that one you know uh, an adult or a supervisor or a teacher or parent or whatever they can probably guide them through right but not really give the moral as an explicit thing bahut hi slippery slope hai professor bolia yeah. to guiding hai na isme hum teaching ke janjal mein phas jate hain whereas what hmm. we should be doing is facilitating learning so i like to say that bachpan is made of two syllables you know bach and pan to kuch cheeze hain jo hame bacha ke rakhni hai bacche mein inherent hain and we have to make sure ki wo khatam na ho jaye kuch cheeze hame pan pani hai so curiosity and you know about the world ये सब हमें बचा के रखना है एंड वो नहीं बचेगा इफ वी टेल देम एवरीथिंग यू नो द करेक्ट आंसर सो चिल्ड्रन डोंट नीड गाइडेंस इन फैक्ट अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम्स आई मीन आई फाइंड चिल्ड्रन टू बी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पीपल टू टॉक टू बिकॉज दे आर ऑलवेज शोइंग मी अ न्यू वे ऑफ लुकिंग एट थिंग यू नो एडल्ट विल ऑलवेज टॉक इन द सेम ओल्ड वे अबाउट द सेम ओल्ड थिंग्स आप बच्चे से बात करिए वो आपको एक नया पहलू दिखाएगा किसी भी चीज का इफ वी आर ओपन टू लिसनिंग अगेन sure uh, uh so so then a related question and that has come from the audience as well is uh, how do you think we can tell stories well i mean i know that's a broad question but if you have any specific pointers to that that oh, that is something teachers often ask me so then i ask them a question in return i ask them how do you cycle well or how do you swim well you just cycle you just swim and uh, because adults have this habit of uh, wanting to be absolutely perfect in front of children and of course their behavior actually goes against it but wo ek another story <laughs> so uh, they cannot uh, sort of get through the process of they want to be perfect storytellers you can't write the cycle perfectly on the first day but what i want to share with them is that children are actually very kind and forgiving and unlike the adults judging them the children are not judging them at least they don't start out like that to aap kuch bhi kahani sunayenge wo bade shock se sunenge aur wo usme apna yogdan bhi denge so it is just something that you we adults have to relax and go into it as if uh, you know just as if you are eating an ice cream or something you don't think twice about what is the perfect way of eating an ice cream you just eat it so that is the app attitude i think uh, teachers and parents should have yeah yeah and you do get perfect at eating the ice cream eventually right so as long as you do it with all your mind uh, <laughs> and yes, all the absolutely. joy you will definitely joy get is it. a very key thing uh, professor bolia i'm glad you brought it up because that is a key factor in telling listening interacting with children that should definitely always be there Yeah, yeah no absolutely i mean that's what i have found in my own teaching the day i'm you know i'm taking a lot of joy in teaching the classes go very well uh, the day they ask questions the classes go very well but you know when it is more of a job that has to be done it is of course a problem uh, but coming to pragna ji so from from sort of broad ideas to something more specific pragna ji what really inspired you to take up teaching science through stories people usually don't think of it that way right i mean people think of values as something that can be done through stories and i'll come back to valentina ji for that but uh, you know how did you and why did you what inspired you to to do that science and stories yeah so actually uh, first time the idea occurred to me uh, about uh, 15 years back there was one student i was teaching class 11th and 12th and this girl was so absolutely weak in physics and somehow not i was not able to engage her with anything in the class so one day i just got talking to her after the class and 
I was just asking her, what do you want to do? Why you click in science? And uh, what do you like doing in your free time? So she just said that, you know, I love uh, detective stories and I want to go into forensic science. So it got me thinking. And next day, I uh, brought an assignment uh, <coughs> based on projectiles where <coughs> somebody has fallen off a building and the police uh, is investigating whether this is uh, somebody who has naturally fallen or somebody who has been pushed. Uh, so depending upon the distance from the building and so on. <coughs> and to my utter surprise, uh, she was so excited. And next day she did it and she came to me that, ma'am, I didn't know how to apply the formula. I asked my father and he told me how to calculate. But finally, I think this is the answer. And this is the floor from which, uh, which this person must have fallen down and uh, and so on so that really made me think that okay i people who are not connected with uh, physics uh, chalk and talk dry physics i need to uh, bring some other interest and then uh, but finally it took shape in uh, uh, very specifically uh, in 2014 exactly on june 18 i got a letter from assistant director of education doe delhi uh, showing me excerpts from a letter they had received from PMO. And uh, what the letter from PMO said that this query is to bring your attention about the abysmal standards of science education in the Indian schools. Practically, it involves learning by rote, and these and the projects are often plagiarized, and practicals are just a few sums, thus uh, leaving no space for deductive reasoning which seeks to establish a cause for observed phenomena. And essentially, a scientist is someone who, uh, through rational means, tries to explain his observations of natural phenomena just like a forensic investigator. And therefore, I ask you to lay more emphasis on the deductive reasoning. And the assistant director asked, uh, requested me to give my suggestions for improvement of science teaching in schools and he already knew that I was working with Dr. Verma on uh, experiential learning. Uh, so, you know, that forensic investigator just uh, connected with that past experience. And from that day, I started uh, very specifically looking for these stories and uh, fortunately, I found a very good resource in uh, some books which are published by NSTA USA. So they have a, a, a very good uh, uh, literature uh, where they're given a lot of stories. In fact, the story that I told today was taken from there only. And then as I did my teacher's training, uh, uh, many teachers, uh, I helped them to make their own stories. And so, uh, you know, it... Uh, it, it kind of built up that uh, teachers were able to create uh, such stories which were open-ended and then they learned to recognize that how, what kind of stories would be suitable, which can lead to further exploration and yet are set into a background which would be age appropriate. So that's how it happened actually. That query from PMO was the trigger. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's very interesting, actually, apart from what you shared about storytelling itself, uh, you know, my takeaway for this is that uh, this whole issue of, uh, you know, science or whatever education not happening in the best way, it probably is not that it is not, uh, you know, people at various levels are not really aware of it. I mean, even at the PMO level, if they can send a letter like that, and I saw you were quoting it, they definitely are aware. But the other, you know, uh, part for all of us also is that it is not enough just that the PM or PMO want something to happen. You know, in a democracy, we often probably mistake it to be an autocracy where the Raja wants something and boom, it immediately happens, right? It doesn't happen that way. People have to participate in a democracy, in this case, teachers and parents, of course. Uh, just the PM wanting something or the government wanting something is definitely not making everything happen anywhere in the world, forget our country. Uh, but no, great. So that's very useful and which brings me to a related question, uh, Pragyaji, which is, you know, you, you said there are stories that involve situations that young children can easily identify with, right? You specifically focus on the young part. Uh, are there any stories for older students as well? You know, where do you find such stories? How do you find the right kind of stories 
that are appropriate for such inquiry based uh, science education i know you talked about nsta as one source but if you can shed more light on this it will be very helpful for all the teachers present here yeah so actually there are uh, stories when you read they kind of uh, uh, generate some questions in your mind and you can use them with the senior children for example uh, once we did a program with dr hc verma called uh, uh, sip your physics hot and that was on thermodynamics so we started this program with uh, two stories and one of them i can tell you that uh, there is this uh, very cold wintry night where a man is passing through a uh, jungle uh, forest and uh, he is very hungry and very cold and wet so do usko ek light chamakti dikhti and there is a small hut where he knocks and the old lady comes out and she says oh you are wet come in come in and then uh, so what he does is that he just takes off his uh, wet clothing and uh, then he aise aise phook maarta hai apne haathon par to wo puchti ki why are you ye aise phook kyu maar rahe ho to kehta hai ki mere haath bahut thande hai main inko garam kar raha hu so she says okay bad job main tumhare liye kaadha banati hu then kaadha usko hot serve karti hai to wo kya karta hai wo jo katora hota hai usko phook maarta hai तो वो लेडी कहती है अब क्यों भूख मार रहे हो कहते इसको मैं ठंडा कर रहा निकलो मेरे कम से बाहर तुम जादूगर हो तुम ठंडा करने के लिए भी फूक मारते हो तुम गरम करने के लिए भी फूक मारते हो ये तुम कोई जादूगर हो बट देन वी आस द चिल्ड्रन वट वाई हाउ डू यू द सेम थिंग बोथ द रिजल्ट कैन बी अचीव बाय दिस सो यू नो देट ओके वेन द एयर इज यू जस्ट open your mouth like this the air suddenly expands and then uh, it becomes uh, cold because it uh, takes the uh, energy for expanding from within itself and it becomes cold now but then we tell them that is it really so do you, uh, what would happen supposing if you had a hot room and there if you did this would the air become cool or if you take a straw and blow through that and would you find the air cooler at the other end so there is here also a scope for investigation and then they realize that it's not just that the air expanding which uh, makes it cold through the straw also it travels and then expands at the other end but there it doesn't become cold so actually when you blow and the rushing air reduces the pressure side se cold air usme entrained ho jati hai and that entrained air cold air makes it cold so here there is a scope for investigation also so that's how uh, you can adopt such stories for elder children as well and oh, no, this is so typical of professor etsy verma to just uh, you know combine real life experiences with science in such a beautiful manner but i have the similar question for you as well valentina ji how do, how do you where do you find your stories you know uh, you know um, so i asked so that to pragya ji that that is interesting actually um stories of course typically uh, i ask people uh, children and teachers in my workshops you know i said where do you find stories and they come up with you know libraries and online and movies and books and ye and ho and then finally there are no more answers and that's when i tell them that there are stories all around us at this given point there are stories there are so many minds there are so many stories so let's not limit it to uh, you know and uh, so i mean and now of course you can find stories online but there are so many books and i think if everybody actually looked at the stories of their region and uh, found those stories that would also give us a cultural connect you know the children a cultural connect what is happening now is that uh, they are like kites which are flying high but they're not rooted and that rootedness will come if you connect with your own culture of the region so i and of course i mean you've had a session on mother tongue so i won't go into that but the thing is i tell uh, children i said you know when you go abroad because all of you want to go abroad and uh, they ask you where you are from and you say india and uh, people will say okay so which languages do you know and you will say i speak only in english and they will laugh at you because you come from a country with hundreds and you know of languages and dialects and you only speak english so please i i personally feel very sad that i am an indian who only knows two languages english and hindi uh, i mean i tried to learn bangla i told my gujarati friends to speak in 
Gujarati. So actually, what I'm saying is there are stories everywhere. And uh, for history, geography, I mean, you know, start a lesson with the story of that region. So, and very simple thing would be to just get a book of Indian folk tales by A.K. Ramanujan which NBT has printed and uh, it's available in Hindi and English and all other languages, make a start there. Make a start with folk tales. You can even go online to find them. And uh, while choosing stories, uh, parents and teachers should not look at teaching. Again, they should choose stories for the fun of it, for the enjoyment of it. Choose stories where they enjoy, which the children enjoy. And let the children also choose their own stories. Uh, so. Stories are pretty yeah. much. No, no, absolutely. Right? I think that's a very important thing, point. I, I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, Pradeep ji mentioned nature. I mean, nature is like a treasure trove. You can't learn what you can't learn. I mean, there's no such thing that you can't learn from nature. So, our trees sometimes end up uh, at the end of the year, that we sometimes end up creating rhymes and stories about things, you know, about creatures, about stones, about a little broken teapot. हर चीज की कहानी बन जाती है और हर चीज एक पर्सनालिटी ले लेती है सो देर इज नो या नो यू आर एब्सोल्युटली राइट एक्चुअली सो आई मीन नॉट ओनली कैन यू यू नो सेंस एंड फिगर स्टोरीज फ्रॉम योर एनवायरनमेंट आई मीन देयर आर आई मीन वी आर लिविंग इन अ कंट्री वेयर यू नो द दादीज एंड नानीज एंड मम्मीज एंड पापाज एवरीबॉडी नो देयर स्टोरीज from that level to all the puranas and vedas that you talked about i mean there are stories just about everywhere right so so for us to be asking that question also is sort of unfortunate it uh, is but here we are uh, uh, anyway so i think uh, let me just take in the interest of time a couple of questions from the audience uh, of course these also came partially from the audience uh, so this question is uh, you know uh, so for for you pradeep ji as well as valentina ji uh, it's a simple question how do you teach a special child you know storytelling for for special needs children do you have any insights to offer on that uh, pradeep ji and then valentina pradeep ji would you like acha <laughs> so i must admit uh, that i don't have any special expertise in that but uh, what i do with regular children is what i would suggest take your cues from the child so what you have to do is you have to uh, tell various different kinds of stories and uh, you know picture books and something with pictures so you have to keep trying and see what the child enjoys the most and that will be your uh, you know go ahead with that because each child is different even each special need child is very very different so one formula cannot fit all but uh, so the parent should keep trying and there are lots of books i mean start with picture books because they have pictures and you know and see and your child will respond to some books uh, in a more excited manner than uh, to others i i uh, totally totally agree with you you know there is no uh, prescription for entire covering an entire population uh however we have uh, done some work in uh, the institution where i am now presently that is majhira national basic educational institution uh, my brother was looking after it and is and uh, we had taken up help from the site savers international made a survey of the entire district and uh, got the children who were uh, differently able or specially able one of the thing is not just storytelling and the entire lifestyle has to be integrated so we had several children living with the other children we have a hostel where the other children were also living so whatever story were being told to them is also being told to these children how do they learn it is not from the teachers sharing with the other children and each age group each kind of debility or uh, deficiency in uh, learning whatever it is they will come from those so this is how the approach has to be there i am also not an expert but since we have been doing some help to these people i think uh, we should have an approach that these children are not different neither differently or they are as good as the others and they should be with the others we tell them the same stories maybe they will hear it a little differently maybe they will not be able to hear it but we can do it in pictorial manner the other children who are living with them will help them to tell them we have to teach those children not to look down on these special able ones once you do that this becomes a family and they learn 
with those stories itself with their own thank you so i think i would just like to add that i agree that each child is different special yes. need or not special each child is different and should be treated uh, i stand know. correct i stand I mean, correct you know, what i agree with you pradeep ji that they should all you know listen yes. to it together like falling rain but the teacher should know that each child is different also so i'm not uh, you know contradicting what you're saying i agree with what you're saying completely uh, and uh, yeah yeah, yeah pragya ji please so may i add here that uh, we used uh, a situation uh, regarding a specially able child to uh, create a scientific investigation you know there is a child who is uh, wheelchair bound and not much movement except his hand here so uh, and his friend is normal so he wanted to play ball and he wanted to hit a target but obviously he cannot uh, lift the ball and throw so you know this we asked the children in the class that how you can help him play this game so then children came up with this that okay we can use a plank and put it against his chair and then he can simply just you know uh, click the ball and roll it down and that would go and hit so now the child on the wheelchair has to decide that at what angle this would be inclined and as he tells guides the other child ki okay put it at this angle and then it should go and hit so then they investigated into the properties of the plank whether it should be rough or smooth and what about the surface beyond the plank whether how far the ball will go if it is grass or if it is smooth floor so again here they found a solution and at the same time they explored they investigated it scientifically so that's how they helped this specially able child yeah so no, wonderful wonderful that's a, that's a uh, great idea uh, uh, so one last question i guess before we close the day uh, and that is uh, you know again i think from a parent and there are some parents also of course as a part of the audience my child is 5 years old but doesn't take interest in listening to stories and narrating stories what should i do <laughs> and to all of you actually all the panelists uh, so <clears throat> should i go yeah please valentina yeah please. uh so you know this has to start really early it's like saying aapne ek beej lagaya ek sapling nikal raha hai and you are standing there and say grow 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 and it will not grow what you have to do is not focus on that sapling you have to focus on the environment around it how is the soil how is the sunlight how is the so i request and beseech parents to please focus on the environment don't get after the child if you create a environment of reading which means you also read then your child will read if you are not creating that don't expect him to So I just want to share a personal anecdote. When my son was young, I mean, we would go. I just have one child, and we would go on uh, vacation, and we would all take our own books and board games, and we would stay in hotel rooms which had TVs, but TV, the TV was never switched on. And my son never asked for the TV to be switched on because it was never switched on because that was the environment he was growing up in. So parents do something else and want their children to do something else, and then they say. you know we are not able to do this so for, take the search light away from the child and focus on yourself and see what you can do yeah pradeep ji yeah please uh, it, it, that's just to supplement valentina ji see uh, okay if your child is not listening to stories you listen to his stories or her stories ah, yes <laughs> <laughs> i had a similar problem so, with my daughter and i realized that okay she is telling and i am not listening so i was doing something and then i kept those things baba you are not listening okay okay now you say and then uh, okay five year old child will talk and talk and talk <laughs> so what you have to do is listen and listen and listen and nod your head and sometimes you will say oh dad do you do this you do that you do those slowly that child will start listening and then you in the process you start a strike a conversation and while striking a conversation you tell the stories and that will be the process in my opinion thank you wait uh, yeah. pragya ji anything from your side yeah i would combine the two you know as uh, pradeep ji said you listen to the child you will know at that point of time what is it that is interesting to the child and build a story on that 
I remember I used to insist to my mother that every day she would tell me a new story. एक sentence भी अगर पूछती story का होता था तो I would tell her that this is an old story that you tell. And poor lady, she used to coin a story every day for me. And uh, you know that's how I started loving stories, and I then went on to read books after books and. Old Bangla, Sharad Chandra, Bankim Chandra. So you know that as Dalinkana ji is saying, the parent also has to enjoy. My mother used to enjoy challenging herself to make up the stories for me according to my interests. So that is the key, I think. That striking the conversation and building from there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Actually, to so my own personal experience, Pragya ji is, uh, you know, my son of course is not as demanding as you. Uh, i did make a lot of stories and i also repeated and he didn't mind it fortunately mm-hmm. and that went on so our dinner tables were always full of stories about little things uh, that uh, were there right in front of us right so it worked out very well uh, we bonded a lot over over those stories yeah and how it has helped me that whenever i'm doing a teachers training program or any webinar i see to it that i do it in a different way if my mother could make a new story yeah. every day i make a new program on the same topic that's the thing so then nothing is repeated for my audience then yeah no absolutely thank you thank you so much uh, all of you it has been such a big pleasure having all of you for such a beautiful theme i think the kind of things and insights that teachers can bring to such a platform uh i think very few people will be able to and and you three have been so great so great in in uh, in this session uh before we conclude i would just like to uh, say that i have personally learned a lot uh i think you know from sudha ji the whole 45 15 rule right google says you know 80% of the time for google and 20% of the time for your own initiative and and that's what i was referring to in 80 20 and now uh, 45 15 and just the whole fact about trying to be minimal and our personally experience i actually observed that you know being where she is she was actually drinking from a steel glass right and that was fairly interesting she is living what she is talking about in terms of a minimalistic living and of course valentina ji your your insights were absolutely wonderful uh, you made us almost feel that uh, you know almost everything that you can think of in in education system the softer qualities the more subtle qualities they can all be imbibed through stories whether it is acquiring good personal attributes improving comprehension um, of course being a good listener all of that i think and i'm sure there are uh, like you said there are studies formal studies uh, for those who, uh, here who are very research minded to actually support and buttress many of the things that you said but i completely believe you personally i i myself have benefited and seen people being benefited and your whole idea of uh, not really explicitly telling the moral of the story i think perfectly resonates we don't want our kids to be you know thinking only in a unidimensional fashion uh and definitely they are not a waste of time the stories are not a waste of time i think what we end up doing often in life is to borrow from another author you know we often just try to do the urgent and not the important right and and right. that's why we miss uh, many important things that we should be doing in the education system whereas doing the important things such as stories and other ideas would probably take us much farther than where we are right now in the long run and uh, pradeep ji thanks so much for sharing all your wonderful ideas uh, what i take back home for sure is the whole sharing the entire context and specific uh, ideas from the lives of the people who have lived it if possible even create a situation where they can experience some of the things that uh, that you're talking about uh, and then the panel of course all of you shared your own uh, insights uh, we will of course compile all of this and it will be available for the audience uh, with this i i really like to thank you all once again for being a part of the webinar our next webinar for the audience is going to be on a very special theme i know science is important i am a scientist and technologist myself of course but uh, no less important is the uh, is the subject right but probably not really the subject of social sciences uh, you know the next webinar is going to be on that theme we'll again have a bunch of wonderful teachers who will share their experience on on uh, how social sciences can be deliver, delivered effectively and what their importance is Uh, the the day can't end without a big thank you to everyone who's been associated in making this webinar a success uh, uh, so shri sudha murthy ji valentina ji pragya ji thank you so much uh, uh, pradeep kumar ji you know despite all the connectivity issues you took out the time and shared your experiences vision and thoughts with us uh, i would also like to thank the entire uba unnat bharat abhiyan team for helping us all through the national coordinator professor vijay Uh, our advisory committee chairman dr chidambaram and the entire unnat bharat abhiyan team that has been helping us all through uh, 
Of course, the organizing team, which has worked very, very hard in making this a success. It has been a platform change for us, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that it has all worked out smoothly. Uh, please stay up to date and feel free to share your suggestions, questions, or queries on, on any of the social media handles that you follow. And with this, I officially declare the closure of the webinar. Look forward to seeing you in the next few editions. Thank you.